Um, we are a scanning company, a service provider. So we scan a company called Bad Ship, which is a um, digital marketplace for artists, for professional artists. So somebody spends two weeks building an asset and then they put it on a marketplace for a dollar. Yeah, that's yeah, not two dollars. Yeah, this is how much it's worth, you know. So they don't price yeah, it two dollar. Yeah. They do it like fifty five dollar or one hundred and twenty dollar. You know, we've sold you know hundreds of thousands of models in the past, and we yeah. sold them at a good price. You know, majority of the artists they don't have that business knowledge. They never price test anything. You know, undercutting the market on such a huge scale, like, yeah, is bad for everybody. Because the prices are ridiculously low. Like, pay me two dollar a month. You know, I'll yeah. show you how I model a character. Better to do yeah. it for free, you know, that way. So the lack of confidence in, in your product is quite possibly the, the problem. So yeah, you know, he does all this, you know, really super detailed kind of Clean stuff. Clean up and, yeah, that's great. And should I try and show you the scan in ZBrush as a raw oh, no, file? Okay. Okay, so thanks a lot for joining me. Really nice of you, man. I mean, um, no worries. No, no. It's good, <laughs> it's good to see you again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think last time we spoke was when I did the Atlas of CG thing, like this. Right? Oh yeah, that was yeah. A, that was, that like was yeah five years, years ago. ago. <laughs> was it five years? Yeah, it was 2015. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, is that's insane. A long time. How's it going, <laughs> yeah. man? How's everything good? Yeah, good. Yeah, really good. Yeah, been been really busy. Um, yeah, just sort of usual like working hard yeah. not really having much holiday <laughs> yeah i know like every time i message you you're like i'm busy i'm doing this i need to go there and <laughs> I know, i'm sorry <laughs> no it's fine it's fine i understand that it's like yeah. it is good right when you enjoy doing what you're doing it's just it's not it's fun yeah, that's right? it. i mean yeah i think i enjoy parts of it in some parts i think when like um you know when you get to like a certain level of kind of like busyness or like mm -hmm. a certain size like you, you tend to lose track of the the things that you used to really love doing and mm -hmm. you sort of end up having to do you know all the other sort of boring stuff do you so, do boring yeah. stuff now oh uh, yeah <laughs> yep. like what <laughs> <laughs> uh just like uh you know like building websites managing websites you oh. know, customer service stuff you know all the stuff that comes with running a you know a store basically business um, and that's yeah business stuff yeah so I, there's less time for me to you know actually enjoy making things or sculpting or whatever i mm -hmm. you know i used to enjoy doing you're, you're pretty um, yeah. good at, at the websites. Like every time you show me the websites, they're really good. Like I can see that you put so much love into it. So I yeah, think, yeah, we do. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Yeah, thank like, you. Yeah, I mean we have um, we've got like a you know a little team here that does all that stuff. Oh. Um, so the the, the developer who does websites, he's in the next. He's also my business partner. He's in the <laughs> next room to me. So you know we have a few people working on it, and you know my wife does. Um, she's a sort of marketing expert, so wow. she helps out. And you know the design and stuff, kind of Chris and I do. Um, that is great. Whether that's whether um, that's any good or not, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how many how many people are you guys now at ten twenty four? Uh, just two. Just two. Do you want? Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Was your your partner name was Chris? I don't know if I remember. Chris, him. yeah, Chris, Chris Rollington. I think yeah, you're yeah. friends on Facebook. Yeah, we are. Yeah. He's he's very quiet. Like he doesn't say much. <laughs> yeah, he's not really not really in the public eye very much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I think he likes it that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, he's like an yeah. introverted person, I guess, right? Maybe. I don't uh, know. Not, not really, no. I think, uh, no. no. No, not particularly. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe I'll get him on a call sometime. You can meet him. Uh, yeah, that would be great, actually. Maybe we can do yeah. one with him like this and talk about more stuff later. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be, yeah. That'll be cool. awesome. Uh, do you want to yeah. say like what you guys do so we can we can have it on the podcast and people, those who don't know actually to, to know what your business yeah. is? Mm -hmm. is this, are we actually recording now? Is this like yes. part of the... Yeah, yeah okay, okay, cool. Uh, so yes, I mean our company, Ten Twenty Four. So we've got a couple of sort of areas that we work in. So we've got the main uh, company, which is called Ten Twenty Four Media Limited. Mm -hmm. um, we are a scanning company, a service provider. So we scan using our photogrammetry rig. We scan people for clients, um, uh, games mostly. Uh, we do a bit of work for the film industry, a bit of work for sort of fashion design, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we've got 3D Scan Store, which is basically the other side of the business, which is now kind of overtaking mm -hmm. the service side. Um, yeah. And that's the online sign, online sales. Yeah. Um, so we scan people in our studio and then we put them online for sale. And we retopologize them, do all the sort of secondary work, prepare them, make them to production ready models and sell them. And then 
the, well, there's another little subsidiary, which is Anatomy 360, which is a smaller, very small sort of company that we produced a, a Unity mm -hmm. sort of viewer for 2D artists so they can view uh, models in, in 3D, uh, mm -hmm. but scans basically, so, you know, to draw from. Um, and then the next, uh, the third big part of the company that we're just about to launch is a company called Bad Ship, which is a um, digital marketplace for artists, for professional artists. Yeah. Um, and that's, I can hopefully show you some of that tonight because it's... Um, That'll be great because I saw... By the time this video goes out, yeah, yeah it'll be live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, we can show it now. And So you, you said you, you're yeah. going to release it next week, right? At the time when I publish this video, I guess. Yeah, by the time this video is live, you'll be... Uh, let me just open it in a window and drag it over here. I can see your window as well here. Oh, cool. yeah. So this is the... Uh, this is it at the moment. So it's a... Share it already? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I mean, this is a very nice website, man. I mean, I can see you, you put so much like <laughs> love into this. <laughs> yeah, we put... A, there's a lot of development work. This has taken a year to build. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. You've got your own page. <laughs> Yeah, you're, um, you're such a nice person, dude. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> well, you make good stuff, you know. I can't not have it on there. Very nice of um, you. So, yeah, I mean, it's been a massive endeavor because this isn't just like a, it's not just a WordPress site. This is a full enterprise um, ground up build. You know, it's, um, so it's been about a year, well, maybe a year and two months it's taken us to build it all. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, um, yeah, it's a professional sales platform, basically. Um, so, you know, it's, um, Although we've just cleared the cash, so it's a little bit slow at the moment. <laughs> Having said that, but yeah, it's it's a really nice um, sort of easy to use website for artists, and you know they can log in and sell their own stuff. You can open up stores, and you know you can apply for accounts. Um, it's it's the same as you know some of the other big marketplace sites, basically. But um, we're focusing on high end stuff, you know, and yeah. high end sellers, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're not going to have a load of rubbish on there. <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you guys also like, um, I remember, I don't know if it was you, like uh, you posted on Facebook that people are selling their stuff for cheap uh, or someone else. I'm not sure. I think it was you. Yeah, right? no, it was, yeah, it was me. It's a bit of a bugbear of mine that like, yeah. um, you know, somebody will spend three months or not, not even three months. So somebody spends two weeks building an asset and then they put it on, a marketplace for a dollar. Yeah, that's yeah, not two dollars. Yeah, no, no, it's, it doesn't help anyone. I mean, all it does is devalue or undervalue the work yeah. of all artists because people look at that, like producers, people buying assets yeah. for their projects. They look at it and they go, "Well, you know, this amazing asset is two dollars. Why should I pay, you know, three hundred dollars, whatever it's worth, for yeah. you know a professional artist to do something good?" <laughs> so with this, we're trying to sort of instill that kind of mindset that you're work is basically worth more than a donut yeah, yeah. You know oh I mean? yeah definitely <laughs> that's a very good example and do you guys also yeah. are kind of like consulting the artists any guidelines like when they go to your website to know okay this is how much their work is i mean how they this is how they should price it this is this is how much it's worth you know so they don't price yeah, it two dollar yeah. they do it like 55 dollar or 120 dollar Exactly. Yeah, that, that's the idea. We want to sort of use our experience in the, you know, we've sold, you know, hundreds of thousands of models in the past and we yeah. sold them at a good price. You know, we've not sold them cheap. Yes. Um, not by any stretch of the imagination. And, um, you know, we know that you can sell at a good price, yeah. um, a, a, a fair price for you and for the industry as a whole. Um, so, yeah, we're pr quite prepared to, you know, use that knowledge that we've got to, to try and help artists price their assets correctly. Um, because a lot of people, I mean, not many people have, you know, that much experience selling assets. With the business, you know, if you yeah. put exactly, yeah, if you put something on a marketplace for a couple of dollars and you sell twenty of them, that's your only experience is selling those assets for two dollars. Yeah. You know, you don't know that you could have sold it for twenty dollars. You know. Yeah, <laughs> and and I actually remember like when I um, when I made that bodybuilder in two thousand and twelve, and you you asked me to put it on your website to sell it, I was like, yeah. this is not gonna sell. You know, I had no yeah. idea. I didn't know anything about was, it at the time. I was paying you thousands, wasn't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think I I, I, I think overall it sold like seven thousand dollars or something like like that. Yeah, and yeah. I was surprised. Was I was crazy. like telling my wife, "This is crazy! Like, just one model, yeah. everyone is buying it." You know, and yeah, that's it. And, and it's not just that. Like a lot of people actually found found it useful, right? I mean, with you didn't price it yeah. ridiculously high or low. No, it wasn't high. No, not at all. Yeah. It's just 
I think another thing is having your assets alongside other comparably good assets, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So like, um, I kind of think of it like a sort of like a, um, like, I, you know, I don't want to devalue anyone's work. But, you know, if you have like a, an amazing product that's taken six months of artist work to produce yeah. next to something that somebody's, you know, like somebody's, two minutes. I don't know, yeah, two minutes, <laughs> like scanned a, a leaf or something. Do you know what I mean? That, and it, you know, you, yeah. you kind of want to be in good company. And I think that's where, you know, with ScanStore, that's why your product sold because it was comparable to the other products mm -hmm. on there. And, you know, it was a, a useful addition. And I think that's where we're sort of headed with this as well. Yeah, and the thing is, like, someone with your experience in business, you're both a good artist and you understand the business. You know, majority of the artists, they don't have that business knowledge, you know. And one of the things I learned is, like, they never price test anything. They just put a price and they just, like, try to sell it with that price. You know, they never try to see exactly. if they can, they can sell it, like, $10 more or $20 more. They just yeah, lowball themselves, no confidence, you know. Yeah, exactly. The lack of confidence is a big thing. And also... It's kind of not surprising in a way, you know, when if you look at a marketplace that has very, very cheap assets and you think, hang on a minute, I've got this, but this is better and this is $2, but how can I possibly price this, you know, higher than this other asset? So, you know, undercutting the market on such a huge scale like, yeah. is bad for everybody because nobody can actually make a living out of their, their work, which is, you know, Chris and I make a good living out of selling assets on the stores and that's because we don't, you know, undercut people. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's kind of the way it works. Um, so it is it is a way to make a living, but I think a lot, a lot of people realize that because they haven't done any, you know, specific testing with their products to see what they are actually worth. And no one's actually willing to do that for them. Yes. So we, we are willing to do that. So that, that's the difference. That is great. And I know like people are starting to use Patreon uh, website, if I say the name correctly, a lot. Pa but, yeah. Pat but they are still like, um, the prices are ridiculously low. Like pay me $2 a month. You know, I'll yeah. show you how I model a character or I mean, better to do yeah. it for free, you know, that way. I don't know. That's, that's yeah. my... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's better to do it for free. If you're only going to charge $2, <laughs> then you, you know, it's, <laughs> you might as well do it for free. And like, you know. It's kind of, <laughs> kind of strange. Yeah, but I think like you said, the lack of confidence in in your product is quite possibly the, the problem. And that lack of confidence comes from seeing other products priced so low. You yeah, know, it, it did. He values the entire industry. Yeah, it does. It does, definitely. And then um, I kind of realized that, it, that the same thing goes into like when they price themselves as a freelancer or when they want to get a job, right? Mm. Artists yeah, are definitely. the lowest paid people, which is not... They can get paid a lot if they understand how much they can make, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, we are, you know, we have quite a few freelancers and, you know, we always like to pay above the sort of going rate because, yeah. you know... It, that's how you keep people. That's how you, yeah. you know, make people happy in their jobs and their lives. And um, so, yeah, I mean, we have freelancers and, you know, they're making an incredibly good living off, you know, the, the work we, that we give them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you, you, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, no, I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> no, sorry. Um, so uh, you used to like... Um, clean up the scans and do all the work yourself in the past so you guys now yep. are outsourcing all of that to to artists uh, no no we do so um i've got uh there's one freelancer do you know the uh salim yeah yeah yeah, yeah so he he's works for us guy. he does all the he's awesome yeah he yeah. does all the really high res stuff for the store and um, show you uh so salim does all these hd head scans that we've got which um I'm gonna actually talk to him as well on, on my on this podcast. Oh, cool. Yeah, he yeah. should. Yeah, he's really good. He's amazing. He's amazing. So yeah, you know, he does all this, you know, really super detailed kind of clean stuff. up, and yeah, that's great. Yeah. So we just give him the the images basically, and he does everything from start to finish. Wow. He's he's amazing. He's you know the best freelancer I've ever had. That's great. Um, <clears throat> yeah. But um. Yeah, but no, the majority of the other stuff, like all the in-house stuff, like everything else, we, Chris and I still do ourselves, all our client work. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, we're still very hands-on with the work. And mm -hmm. um, we haven't really sort of stopped doing that because we only really have Celine. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he's, uh, we've got another guy called Omar who does all the um, fax cleanup stuff. He's really oh. good. Um, and Adam Spring as well. You might have seen his stuff on... Um, I'm not sure if I know that. Go he ahead. did some cool, he did like an old man fax expression stuff. Um, oh, with yes, our scans. I, think, I think I saw something. Do you want to share it here? 
Uh, yeah, Adam Spring. Let me just find him on um, Art Station. Oh, actually, I don't think he's on Art Station. Uh, well, he is, but I don't think he's got the thing that he did on there. <laughs> I think I saw something you posted. Yes, this one. I think yeah. I saw it, yeah, so he did all, all these. Um, so he's doing some freelance work for us at the moment as well. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll have some cool stuff to post from him soon. But yeah, he did all the nice fax cleanup. Do you guys? Pro I, I know you guys provide services for studios as well for games, right? I'm, um, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So what kind of like you do everything like um, scans, fax, um, pictures, yeah. <laughs> all of that, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> the thing with our service uh, model is we're very small. Like I said, there's only me and Chris. Mm -hmm. So we tend to sort of only work on the projects that we really, really want to work on. Oh, that's great. Or if great. it's, you know, like friends that we want to work for, yeah, people that have helped us in the past. So we, mm -hmm. you know, unless it's a really interesting project, um, we tend to not really do them because there's only two of us and our time is so spread over the over the, the weeks and the months. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to sort of figure out what we really want to do and, and you know, try and enjoy that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's that's the thing. And then, um, sorry, what was your question? Uh Um, like getting out there. I'm, I'm just asking, like, what what other services you do for all, like games, films, you know? Yeah. So we, we like, uh, yeah. Sorry. So what I was trying to say was, we provide an end to end service. So mm -hmm. you can come in, you can do the scan, and then we'll provide you with a retopologized, uh, you know, like PBR textures, mm -hmm. uh, normal maps, uh, game ready model for the for a studio that will sort of slot right into their pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of our, you know, that that's that's what our the All of our client work consists of basically we don't really do the, you know, here's a thousand raw scans mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, so you guys are pretty much focused on one job at a time, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, we never do more than one. Well, we have done more than one at a time, but I think as we've got a bit older and a bit sort of, uh, yeah, as we we basically realized that that's just the stress just isn't mm -hmm. worth it. You know, trying to deliver these huge amounts of assets to. <laughs> yes. To like really demanding like you know big clients, it's just it's a bit terrifying. That makes sense, and, yeah. Yeah, and, and I can see like you guys are very focused on the quality, which is great. Like, I guess yeah, that's, that's a all we priority all we always, at. right? Yeah, we would never deliver anything. I mean, we we go above them. Like if if we do some scans and they're rubbish, do you know what I mean? Like if the yeah. scan quality is bad, which sometimes happens depending on the you know how good the person's skin is, and you know all different factors, how hair, how much hair is on their face. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll generally we'll fix that if you know what I mean we wouldn't just give them something that was substandard we'll we'll do it all to the same level mm -hmm. um, and that often costs us a lot of time and a lot of pain but yeah, I'd okay. rather that than somebody <laughs> say oh we use ten twenty four and they're they're crap <laughs> like, you know, I don't maybe think they anyone, have said that I don't know no I don't think anyone <laughs> will, will say that like every time I worked in a gaming studio when they saw your scan they were like very surprised with with the quality. I know you have oh, a right, very cool. amazing setup. Like when you made it, you showed me like the the dome you made. Oh yeah. Did you guys yeah, change so it or is it the same? No, I mean it's the same. It's um, uh, it's quite old now to be honest. We've upgraded it. You know, with new new cameras and uh, oh, what is my? Are you getting? Uh, do you use mirrorless cameras now? Uh, no, we don't actually. Um, my um, keyboard stopped working. <laughs> Weird. Okay. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, it's the same. Wow, this is old now. Yeah, when, well, it's what's this? <laughs> when did you make? When did you make this? Uh, 2015, something. Wow, like that. that's think, five years yeah. ago already. Yeah, it's quite old. I mean, well, the cameras aren't old. It's obviously we've upgraded the cameras and changed the electronics and uh -huh. you know changed the download systems and you know, but the actual. The actual layout of the cameras and things hasn't really changed that much. Um, we've added a few, or quite a few, 50 megapixel cameras to it to wow. build it into like a single head and body scanner. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of does both now. So we don't have to rebuild for a body or rebuild for a head, um, which saves a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, and we're looking at like pneumatic floors now that go up and down, which would be quite cool. So But, you, um, you, you just use the same setup to scan the whole body and the face? Yeah, it does both at the same oh, time. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's really handy. And yeah. it also means for a head, you can get right down, you can get a really big bust. Wow. Which is really cool, really helpful. And then you capture yeah. all the like um, skin textures, details, everything, right? With this setup, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, it only really captures uh, diffuse, um, oh, you yes. know, like a albedo texture, but we do a lot of processing mm -hmm. after the fact. Um, 
and if we're using our set of like you know we've got a humongous library of you know read apologize meshes head and body that we can now draw on to extract details from and you know mm -hmm. we can do a lot of stuff to augment what we've what we capture on the day <clears throat> mm. based on previous you know captures and things so we can like we can get a lot of detail i can maybe show you a head scan yeah that'll um, be great to, to see i have seen it but just to show it here that will that will be great i'll show you in real time on marmoset yeah, that's perfect. Do, that. do you yeah, mind if I ask um, how much does it cost to make a setup like this? I don't know if it's a secret for your business or you want you um, want to share. I honestly don't know. Um, I think so. To build, well, we've built a few for clients and stuff. Um, I think one like ours, you'd probably pay with the big cameras and stuff about one hundred and fifty thousand um, pounds. But you can, you, yeah, pounds. Yeah, mm -hmm. so about two hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Um, but you could build one for. You know, fifty thousand dollars, no problem. Wow. And if you want to, if you want to use Raspberry Pis and you know, like low low res of cameras and mm -hmm. you know, not you know, expensive flashes, you can probably do it for about five thousand dollars. Maybe. Oh wow! More. But what well, obviously um, yours I, is like high end, and the quality is like on, on a different level. Well, that's it. Yeah, I mean, we're focusing on resolution, um, and that's mm -hmm. what we want more than anything. Um, so we're, we're not even worried about how good the cameras are. We're, we're just <laughs> looking at pure. We just want megapixels, as oh, many sharp megapixels as we can get, and that's yeah. kind of um, yeah. A lot of people disagree with me on that, but um, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, your, your your quality speaks for itself. I mean, even if they disagree, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, look at this, man. Nice. This is like amazing. Wow, this yeah, is sorry. This this is insane. Boom is doing something weird to my mouse, like. Oh, it's if my whack on works, hang on. Sorry, that's fine. Yeah, it's, I don't know what's happening, but my mouse is doing something very weird. Shall I try and show you this scan in ZBrush as a raw oh, file? Yeah, and then you can see. I don't think I need my middle mouse button in ZBrush. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what screens it deciding to load on? Show you yeah. ZBrush and then come back. <clears throat> so I guess as I was saying before, this is the final um, model so obviously I've got some tessellation on there mm -hmm. that's the mesh which we can rotate around and I can show you a bit more detail now actually because I can actually rotate so that's amazing yeah, you know this is kind of the sort of skin how do you get the eyes look so from. real the eyes this is Salim's genius eye oh, wow. model so we've got um like a they're basically it's a trick so uh, that's amazing it looks real to me the lens the lens is the same shape as the um the eyeball, but the eyeball's got um, a normal and a height map on it. Oh, so it's, it's like tricking, a, yeah, yeah, faking refraction. Yeah, so you got a normal map and then a height map. So but, if you put the lens back on, but even the, the the connection between the the eyeball and the eyelids, it's perfect. Like it looks very smooth oh, yeah. and natural. That's geometry. So if That's you turn amazing. this off, you can see, you know, it starts to look a bit CG. Oh, that, that helps. And then there's occlusion, yeah. I guess. Yeah, that's amazing. Exactly. It, it does a really nice blend. Um, yeah. It's kind of like a nice little shadow. That eye texture really is, is, a, is a scan or it's just a... No, it's just a hand-painted one. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so, yeah, it's just handmade. Eyes are very hard to scan, really. Yes, it is. Um, I think you can get them. I think Jeremy on Texture XYZ, he sells he some nice eye textures. He did something, yeah. Yeah, he scanned loads of eyes. I think they're, they're pretty useful. I haven't, I can't use those, obviously, because these are for sale. So. Oh, yeah. But um, like we were saying, so this is the raw scan from that... Um, that model so mm -hmm. this is 100 percent raw geometry wow so you, so you know it's not got the detail yes yeah, see there. there yeah yeah but it's still got quite you know it's got all the wrinkles under the eyes and stuff yeah and then you know it comes out gets nice sort of you know it'll catch little you know beard hairs and things like that and wow that's, actually that's, that's not 100 percent. that's better now that's got the the other one was on the top of it i guess yeah, it was on top of the retop one. So yeah, I mean they're they're quite detailed. They're you know they're you know, there's more than enough detail there for for you know like a photorealistic head. And then um, Salim, and like I was saying, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, Salim, he does his magic on it. Uh, well, this is one I've done actually. Salim hasn't done this one. This is one of mine. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a, the next step, which is the retopology. You know, so we we wrap a mesh onto it, um, which is the yeah. same mesh that we use for all our Everything. scans. So we can swap. Yeah, we can swap textures with pretty much everything that we do. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we just project the details. Um, and then you end up with a sort of clean version of the raw scan. So mm -hmm. that's the raw. That's the clean we need to apologize. And then the next step um, is this one, if this works. 
uh, which is the one with the added detail. Um, quite big, it's about 700 megs. Wow, so yeah, that's a, oh, oh, and then you use the, dis, uh, the the albedo map to project the details, is that how you make yeah, it? Yeah, so we've got, a, we've got a process where we can extract the, um, a sort of, kind of a fake displacement map from the hmm. uh, albedo map, so you know, we can get all these really nice details. little fine details, yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually, I tried um, with one of your scans, I tried to take the, color, the diffuse map and in ZBrush I turned it into an alpha and then use it as a displacement map. It's not as good as this, but it gave me some details. It's Yeah, yeah, it, it does give you a lot of details, yeah, and there are, um, you know, there are definitely, uh, uh, yeah, <clears throat> I can show you how to do it. That would be great. <laughs> but it, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a, a trade secret at the minute and oh. you know, kind of keep it better, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, you can get a lot of details from it. Um, so yeah, and That's then in, in Marmoset, we've got on top of this again, we've got another map, which is just a little... Um, Noise details. Yeah, just a little you know micro displacement. Oh, that's just amazing. Up, you know, it just breaks up the spec. What is that um, micro displacement? Is that, a, is that uh, a map you guys made or...? Yeah, it's wow, just a handmade one. It's just, it's just that. How did um, you make that one? Is it brush? Uh, no, I think I did it in Photoshop. Wow. Um, <laughs> I can't remember what it is. It's something weird, like it's um, it's like a chicken's foot or something. And then it's, <laughs> it's it's some weird like pattern that I found on the internet that I thought it looked quite good. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's some organic thing that's, that's great. Kind of tiled and then modified a bit. But it, wow. it's only you know all it does is break up the spec, um, and then we've got a map to control there. You know, you know what's surprising of. is that the the process is when you talk about it, it's very simple. Yeah, you it know, is, this, yeah, it's a simple. Yeah, but but you feel like I, if if you see this, you'll be like, "This is very complicated." You know, it's yeah, it's crazy detail, insane. But it's yeah, well, it, it's simple in its kind of idea of how you do it. But I yeah. guess you have to build a a massive thing the size of a room, <laughs> yeah. to do it. You know, and, yeah. <laughs> and that that's sort of the, that's kind of the tricky part. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then we just do all the little you know eyebrows and things and hairs and stuff like that. Oh wow. Um, that is but yeah, that's basically, man. that's what we do for the head scans. Do you so. touch the, how much, um, I don't know if that's the secret sauce, if you want to share anything on that. How much do you touch the, the albedo, the colors, like add contrast uh, not, or anything? Not not a huge amount at all. Um, let me see if I can find this guy's color map and I'll show you. Um, <clears throat> we There is some stuff you can do to try and um, like kind of, you know, remove shadows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, which is quite cool. Uh, let's see if I can find his albedo map. Um, well, um, you're showing me this, and I'm kind of like feeling like I feel like that that something inside me wants to go back and sculpt right now. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's just it a, is amazing. Yeah, so that's the original. Uh huh. Um, and you can see because there's quite a lot of reflection on the skin and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you can see it here, but we've got a little trick where we can kind of... Oh, remove. that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's basically just a little thing where you take the red channel and the blue channel, and then you set the blue to difference, and then you bang it over the top of the um, color map. Oh, wow. As a luminosity. That and is so simple. It's cool, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> think about it. The red, the red is like um, absorbs the least light, and the blue absorbs the most. Wow. And then you, um, you basically difference them and then do that and you can get a really nice color it's map. Just, wow How do, and then yeah. you don't have, obviously you don't have any shadows because of the lighter stage you have right yeah exactly yeah i mean the so this is the raw one so you can see you know like up here you know you, yeah but that's you know that's impossible to get rid of i mean you um, don't have to it's, a, yeah no it adds character in, in some ways it actually looks better i think yeah, and, yeah you know when you make a game character it's got a little bit of light built like baked into it yeah I think that kind of helps a lot. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then we, you know, we do some other stuff as well, like, you know, lightening certain areas mm -hmm. with the, you know, masks and, you know, it's, it's just trying to get it look, looking nice and flat. Um, so you do you yeah, use the same uh, workflow for all the characters, all the heads, or, I mean, depending on the color of the skin or. Yeah. All of that so darker change. skin, uh, darker skin, it's easier to do it on because there's more difference between yeah. the light. And the reflection, or the skin and the reflection. Mm -hmm. um, lighter skin, you can't get as good results um, because mm -hmm. it's not an actual. 
we're not using any sort of cross polarized light and um, uh -huh. so you're not actually capturing the difference um <clears throat> but yeah i mean that's it's just a little sort of you know yeah. kind of trick to do you can delight as well the other thing that we do sometimes on like very hard to sort of if it's hard to do this you can actually um use an hdr from the rig from the rim mm -hmm. and you can put the scan in the center of the hdr light it and then invert the ambient occlusion map or the global illumination map and use that to brighten the shadows. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? You bake yeah. it onto the normal map, onto the UV map. Yeah. That, that works really that's, well. That's a good way. That's the, a more accurate way of doing it. For the brighter skin or for the darker skins? For just for anyone that anyone. It works on, really. If I've got time, that's the way I do it. Uh -huh, that's, that's interesting. a much more accurate way. Yeah. So if you imagine having a global illumination bake of this head, uh -huh. And you just invert it so the dark is bright and the yes. light is dark. And yes. then you just use that as a luminosity. So you just kind of flatten even out the, the whole yeah. like light. Even yeah. it all out. Yeah, you have to tweak it quite a bit. But, you know, it's <clears throat> it's quite easy to tweak and quite easy to do. Mm -hmm. But it does take a bit of time. That's interesting. How much time every day mm -hmm. do you spend on, on the stuff like this? Like doing art? On scanning. A scanning or uh, so art site. Uh, we do, we spend so uh, we've we've recently we've just uh, I went a little bit mad and sort of like um, dropped out of work for a week because I got a bit stressed. <laughs> and, <laughs> you worked too much. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So we'd finished bad shit and like um, we'd, we'd sort of I don't know. I just went a bit like my brain just couldn't handle anymore. So wow. took some time off and then we come back and now what we're doing is we're splitting our day up mm -hmm. so it's more manageable. So we're doing you know two hours of bad shit in the morning, four hours of whether that be scan store or client or an Atme 360 or, you know, the game work that we'll talk about in a bit. So we're kind of splitting yes. our day, dividing it into sections because I'm sure you're probably the same. And I think a lot of artists are, it's very hard to skip Money. between tasks. Yeah. yeah so if you're is. doing like one thing, like if you're doing your accounts and then you've got to suddenly, you know, sculpt an ear, <laughs> like it, it, <laughs> yeah. it's very hard to get in the mindset. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why I'm also like managing my time that way. I wake up in the morning, like have my breakfast, play some piano, and then I do yeah. my work for, for the company that I'm doing work for. I finish yeah. that and then I start like working on personal stuff, recording stuff, YouTube or yeah. mm -hmm. or this, or even yeah. sketching. And then in the evening before I sleep, I play a bit of piano to just meditate. Just it's a relax. meditation. Yeah, it's a very good meditation. And then I sleep. Same routine, yeah. but it's like, because um, it, it's actually not boring like when you go to no. an office you know it's different when you control your time yeah and, and you can, you and can how, how, do a lot you know how yeah. do you find switching between tasks how do you find like going from playing the piano to you know doing something non-artistic actually um so i think everything i do there is some art in it mm. if i if i look at it because um well i mean piano helps me to clear my mind it's a very good meditation you know, yeah, yeah. and I can see the difference. Like since I started learning piano and I'm actually like, I have a teacher who's teaching me how to compose music. Oh, right, cool. So that's my plan. Like slowly I'm building up. I'm not rushed to make a music in two years because I want to learn for myself yeah. to, you know, and there's a, there's a science that says like when you learn music and when you play music, when you compose, it can uh, actually um, kind of, um, you know, protect your brain from Alzheimer's or other kind of disease. It keeps your yeah, brain active yeah. and young. So that's that's very good in the morning, and then when I switch to three D, uh, my mind is very fresh. I can yeah. feel the effect. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, uh, no. in the evening, usually I go cut the grass, you know, to clean up the lawn. It's a it's kind of an artistic thing, right? It's it's gardening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, right. Yeah, but if in the middle, if I go play games, I will lose everything. Like even though I yeah, work in the yeah. game industry, <laughs> if I play games, I'm like, oh, I'm lost. I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I have to deal with mm. that, but yeah, I mean, cool. yeah, uh, it's, it's interesting. I, I think you work more than me, so <laughs> you you have a I couple. Don't know. Of... <laughs> I don't, don't know if I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do. I feel that like you have more, like you're handling businesses, which is harder. I'm I'm doing everything on an on a on an individual level, right? It's... Yeah, I mean, so 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 I mean, we are as well in a, in a respect. There's only really two of us, and there is only so much you can do in a day. I think what happens with us is you think we're working harder because I have a scanner. And I'm cheating. <laughs> so, so for me to make a head takes me, you know, a day. Whereas if you were to sculpt one, you know, you'd be like, oh man, that's going to take me, you know, like five days or two weeks or whatever, you know. So it looks like a huge throughput of work, but you know, actually, you know, we've 
sort of we're chasing quite a lot. Well, you have like you you have like your how many websites do you have? Like three or four, I guess, right? Uh, well, four, yeah, four now. Yeah. yeah. So managing those it doesn't take you time. It does. Scan store takes time, and I'm sure about ship is going to take a lot of time. Yeah, that's um, the thing. But yeah, it's just managing. It's customer service. It takes time. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's kind of what I was sort of saying. It's very hard to go from customer service to, you know, trying to be creative and do yeah. something interesting or think of a new product or you know, develop something for the for the company. I agree. Um, yeah. So hopefully we're, you know, we're starting to expand as well. We've just got our, just hiring our first employee, full-time wow. employee. Wow. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, so we've got a really good guy. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So we're hopefully more of that coming. Um, so we're trying to, like, I hate this word, but like delegate. A bit more work. If you mm-hmm. know I mean. No, I think that's a that's a wise people. decision. I mean, yeah, <clears throat> it's I think it gets to a point where you can't do it all yourself anymore. Yeah, and that's kind of where it's where it's got to now. So, and yeah, and if you want to grow, like obviously you're growing too fast. I think, like, which is good. Like, you, yeah, mm-hmm. different what, kind of services, you know. So you definitely need to yeah. delegate. Obviously, <laughs> I can exactly. Yeah, that's it. And I mean, I think uh, like. A lot of artists, again, I think are the same. Like you want to be in control of what you're making. Yeah. And it's, it can be very hard to hand that over to somebody. And, yeah. you know, I think, yeah, I've only realized in the last, you know, sort of couple of months really that that's, that's the only way to go. Mm. You know, you can't keep killing yourself over something. So, you know, yeah. I want to, one question actually. So this is what I want to ask you. Like as an artist myself, there was, like for me, it's b- making business. You know, I spoke to you many times about this. Like last year, I wanted to start a workshop. I made a website and I felt like I'm yeah. not doing it the right way. So I, I removed it. Now I'm actually doing it from a scratch in a different way. You know, yeah. taking a step, like different steps to build it up, you know, in a good way to support people, give good customer service. Um, so the business side, I feel like artists are lacking knowledge on that side. You know, yeah. they just do art and they don't know anything about business. And, and I don't know, I, I think it's important as an artist because you cannot like work in a studio until you're 60 years old or 50 or 55 years old, you know, and sit there and do yeah. a topology. Maybe at some point you need to find a different way of, you know, making money with your art instead of that. So exactly. Um, yeah. So what I'm trying to you- ask is um, you were an artist before and then now you have like a couple of businesses and all of this. Um, I don't know, like any how did you come to to do this like what were the challenges that you had to face and fix and um well i, I think i think like uh, like you were saying like you know a lot of people work in studios and you can't keep doing that till you're 60 i, th- I think like um for, well i think you should do what makes you happy first like you know yes. if you want to do that i think that's absolutely fine you know some people just you know would love that and you know that that's fine but for me personally like um i think i was i don't know what age i was I was working in. I worked at a games company. Um, I was a character artist and environment artist, and then I worked at a visual effects studio as a TD and a character artist and all sorts of things. Um, mm-hmm. And I just felt like there was. Well, it, it, to me, it kind of seemed like you know I I really wanted to do my own thing and kind of go out and you know build these companies that I'd seen these other guys build, and you know, they were all really happy and had this really cool thing that they were passionate about. Yeah. And for me, I was always quite passionate about building a business. Um, mm-hmm. uh, maybe even more so than actually creating, um, you know, sort of the artwork that I was doing. And um, so, and that, that probably comes from my parents. My dad's like a, you know, he owns his own business. My mom's like a sort of entrepreneur. Um, all my sisters all own their own businesses. So I was kind of, you know, my family are all, you know, sort of in the same, yeah, yeah, the same thing. So I always felt like I was going to do that. If you know, what I mean, for yeah. me, work was a stopgap to learn how to run a business. That's what, that's what I spent my time doing was learning the pitfalls and the mistakes hmm. that people have made and then, you know, ultimately making them again myself later. But like that's, um, you know, that's what I was doing. So, I mean, my advice, if you want to start a business is make sure it's something that you really, really love and that you want to do. Hmm. Because I think um, when I first started out, I was uh, trying really hard to um, like not do the work that would um, make me like unhappy. If you know what I mean, I was only really... Yeah even to the detriment of, you know, my finances and, and, you know, having to move, I had to sell my car, I had to do all sorts of stuff just to, you know, try and maintain this. You know, I only want to do character work um, Mm -hmm. and I want to stick with that and, you know, make sure that's what I'm known for. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's kind of the the whole business has been built on that. If you know what I mean, if I'd made a decision early on to, you know, start doing sort of 
you know, kind of things that I wasn't interested in, you know, it might have gone that way or that yeah. might become my bread and butter, which is always a bit of a problem because then you've got to rely on that to your wages. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess the main thing is, like, yeah, try and do, try and work in the area that you really, really want to. Um, and in terms of getting work in and getting jobs, it's just creating the best work that you can and showing it to as many people as you can mm-hmm. in the best way that you can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and, um, and your business is kind of like same thing, right? I mean, you, you you do art, but in a different way. Yeah, You're exactly. Still doing yeah. Art. yeah, that's it. And I guess in a sense, I did make a little bit of a mistake there where, you know, I kind of moved into the technical side of things, which was, you know, scanning. So I, I have moved away from what I really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. But it's allowed me to do and work on lots of very, very cool projects and meet some really cool people. Um, I need to so come up with an idea. Actually, for scanning yeah i mean in general like did, did you plan to do something else or this happened on the way you were like okay you know or this was the solid idea from the beginning no it was never really an idea what what really happened was uh we, we were making characters and uh my business partner chris kind of mm-hmm. came in um and we were just getting asked to do you know can you do 50 characters by wednesday you know, <laughs> that sort of thing and, you know it's kind of the like the usual well, stuff no, really. <laughs> yeah <laughs> So, um, yeah, we just sort of started experimenting with, you know, ways to speed that up and mm-hmm. building a photogrammetry rig was re- all it was really meant to do was to speed up our character production pipeline, really. So we could, you know, bang out better quality characters uh-huh. for, um, you know, for our clients. But actually what happened was we did a couple of scans and stuck them on the Internet and then um, we just sort of have had work ever since wow that's amazing <laughs> yeah it's it's a bit crazy like it, it, because back then there was only us and uh, infinite realities and di4d and a few other sort of yes. scanning companies doing that sort of thing so the you know we just had the you know the whole industry was just sort of coming to us for for scans yeah which was amazing to work on some massive projects really early on mm-hmm. which was you know it was a bit of a gamble um but you know it kind of it sort of worked <laughs> i mean uh and then the obstacles you faced like when you started did, did did you have a clear idea how to start the business because um some artists they're like they're like i want to do business and make money and do other stuff other than art but they're scared to do something you know yeah i think the fear is is a big part of it i mean whenever i first started 1024 you know i was really sick with um worry and oh. you know the fear of like what might happen it wasn't it wasn't an easy process and I don't think it ever is. I think if you do it and it's easy, then it's you know, wrong. you're either incredibly lucky you know, or something <laughs> weird is happening. <laughs> but, you know, for, for a 26 year old, you know, who was mm-hmm. renting a house with no, you know, it wasn't, there wasn't that much. I didn't have that much you know, I didn't have family or anything like that. You know, it wasn't any tie, I didn't have any real worries, but it was still a, you know, I wanted to do well and, you know, it was, it was a big worry. And there's a lot of financial outlay as well, which was, was worrying but i think um just sort of working really hard on marketing myself and marketing the work that i did and really trying to get work in was the way that i overcame the, the fear because once you get a sort of steady supply of work from mm-hmm. some good clients i'm sure you know like it, it just puts your mind at rest and that's when you yeah. can start to take risks and you know when you've, you've got like a good amount of work you can just you, you know you can say right i've got this amount of money i can use that now to take a risk and try and do something different um, and that's how it all developed and that's how it still develops you know mm-hmm. um, did you so yeah i mean was it like um harder than you think or was it easier than than you thought at the time like um i didn't really have any sort of i guess it was hard yeah it's harder than i thought oh um, was it harder that's interesting yeah 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 it's harder than i thought um but not anymore um, right you, now you have the knowledge not anymore it's. I think it's harder now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I still, because I like, I still want to do more and more and more, and that's yeah. that's you know that's the the problem with like running a business. You it makes you greedy. You yeah. Know? And it's not necessarily greed for money. It's greed yes. for knowledge, like, um, knowledge, and doing more and bettering yourself yeah. and achievements. Yeah. And that's not that's a good thing. But I think um, it hurts yeah, a bit you sometimes. Know. You feel like you don't. You know, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm like in the stage you started when you were 26. Now I'm 35. Yeah. <laughs> but you're you still know, young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I'm kind of like trying to do different things, uh, um, doing podcasts or 
doing workshops and helping people and everything. And I'm not doing it for money, you know, because I'm, I want to learn how to grow different things and um, achieve things, you know. It's, it's the, how do I say, like uh, the curious mindset that makes me like yeah. do different things, you know. I never did gardening, exactly. yeah. but I fixed my backyard and front yard. I removed the lawn and this was the first time I ever did gardening. And yeah, the result cool. actually came out better than anyone in our neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, right. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so that was like, for me, I, I solved the problem, right? That's also like when I'm doing, actually learning to play piano, it's because I'm curious, how do they make music? What goes behind this to, to make music, yeah, right? Yeah. I love doing music, playing piano and learning music, but there's also yeah. that curiosity part of it as well, which makes me too. It's a bit scary yeah, too, is. right? I mean, sometimes I'm like, can I do it or not? I mean... I yeah, doubt myself a lot. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. But I think doubting yourself is a good thing. I mean, you have to, to some extent, otherwise you're never going to really try to be better. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I, ne I never yeah. thought about it that way. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, if you just think you're brilliant as soon as you start, then yes. you're never going to, yeah, you're, you're, you're never going to want to want to do more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's correct. <laughs> and then, yeah. um, we, we, when was this, when you started a business, which year was this? Uh, 2000 and, Seven two thousand and eight, I think. Oh um, wow, that's like yeah, it's quite a long time ago. Twelve years almost. Yeah, it was in the middle of the recession. It was a, an amazing time to start a business. <laughs> was it? Was it actually? You know, some people say it's a, it's, it's the best time to start a business. Some it say is. it's not. Yeah. It is right. I didn't I didn't know that at the time, but yeah, apparently it is. <laughs> yeah, well, why is that? Do you know so, now why? I don't really know. I guess interest rates are low. I don't really know. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's no competition or. You know those who it could be. yeah. I feel like might, of, yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like one of the reasons could be like people get caught up with the bad news and mm -hmm. you know listening to all the negativities on, on the media and they just don't do anything. Exactly. You know, they yeah. Just sit and back. Big, yeah, and like big companies, you know, they sort of scale back and everyone's fearful of what's going to happen and yeah. maybe productivity declines and that's maybe a good time for a, like a dynamic sort of small company to you know to sort yeah. of flourish. And then someone like you comes in and does the hard work like this and starts a business. Now we have like three or four websites. That's, yeah, that's, that's amazing, it, yeah. right? Yeah, and uh, the, the whole bad chip thing, we, we basically did that during the, the whole of the lockdown, which is, you know, sorry for the hair as well. It's, <laughs> oh, it's, your <laughs> hair is great. I cut for like four months. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, your we, hair is basically, great. We basically worked on bad chip 24-7 during the lockdown because wow. we had nothing else to do. That's and, amazing. Know, that, that's, Taking yeah, advantage. So we built it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we figured, you know, we've got this time. The whole world's asleep. Let's, um, you know, let's actually finish this and get it done. So that's that's what we did. You know, actually, um, I I got caught up when the locked up uh, lockdown started. I was working from home already, like since August. But mm -hmm. the, the the I was hearing the news like humanity is going to end soon and all that, you know, negative <laughs> mindset. Yeah, yeah. And then at some point after the month, I was like, no, I shouldn't listen to this. This is wrong. Now it's the time actually I need to take advantage of it and work harder. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's it. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. I mean, go and get stuff and all that. Yeah. I mean, it's not that <clears throat> really tough. Like, it's just, I think media is just, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a bad situation, but the humans yeah. were in worse situation comparing to this, you know? Much, much worse. <laughs> much yeah. worse. I mean, yeah. I, I studied media and film and television at um, college and university, and the first thing you learn is bad news is good news. Yes. So, you know, that that's what they thrive on that. You know, as soon as something bad happens, like the papers and the news agencies, they absolutely love it. And, yeah. you know, they make so, so much money. Off, yeah, they do. Like, um, yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, if you know, you know, like, because I obviously do a lot of stuff, and this is going off track a little bit, but obviously no, I do it's a lot good. of stuff with websites and marketing and, you know, like, getting people on your site and you know every you know person you get on the site has a, a value assigned to them and all, all that kind of horrible stuff that's associated with internet marketing you know if you've got like a global pandemic and you're you know the mirror newspaper or whatever you're going to mm -hmm. get you know 150 times more people on your site if you tell them the world's going to end um, yeah. as opposed to if you say oh it's, it's not that bad really you know so, you know or you know it's it's a threat be careful or you know whatever the the actual reality of it is i don't know um, but you know, if you make it as bad as you possibly can, then yeah. that's going to drive a lot more traffic, and that's going to make them a lot more money. And that's all they're doing. That's all anyone has done since the beginning of any like you know awful event in history. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm not a scientist, but I guess it's probably because maybe we are evolved that way to pay more attention to to dangerous news or you know anything yeah. that could endanger our species. 
Maybe. Exactly, or endanger like our lifestyles, yeah. or you know, hurt our children or our families, and yeah. that's what they're preying on. And they, it's not like they don't know that. They know it. Yeah. It's psychology. They know exactly what they're doing. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, like if I did, um, you know, if you want to put it in like a sort of artistic perspective, like if you did, like um, I don't know, if you created two sculpts, one was, you know, like a sort of I don't know. Try to think of an example, like. Um, I don't know, like one was, I don't know if you can put this, no, I can't say that. <laughs> you, <laughs> can say really... <laughs> you can say it. Really. You can say it. So let's say, yeah. let's say somebody does a sculpt of a really kind of like a awful figure in history, like Hitler or somebody. Oh, And makes yeah. it really, you know, like really, really kind of like, a, you know, like a disgusting image. And then yes. somebody makes just a, a really amazing head. Like, can you put them both on art station? Like, you know the, which one's going to get the most views. Yeah, the monster one. going to create the most outrage. Yeah. And that's that's how it works and it's 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 horrible really you know it's it is yeah i mean even in in the game industry i mean it's entertainment i never look at it that way or movies right we like to see yeah um blood or you know we like to see humans getting chopped or which is weird like in in the back of your your mind when you played you're like disgusted by it you don't like to see it but exactly there's something it's like a Imagine if like a World War Two veteran saw you playing Call of Duty two. Yes. Like it, you would be outraged. Yeah. And that's kind of you know, that's kind of standard behavior now. I'm not saying I don't like Call of Duty, I do, but like, <laughs> <laughs> No, I know what you mean. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It's, it's just normalized. It's so normalized. It's just yeah, I agree. Um yeah. <clears throat> so I mean, let me, um we were talking about the scans. I wanna ask you this. Um, where do you see the future of the scans? Do you think that's going to replace the jobs? I mean, like artists doing character art or it's never going to happen? No, I don't think so. I mean, in the short term and by short term, I mean the next 15 years, I can't see that happening mm-hmm. um, because, I mean, you can scan people. You can't scan orcs or, you know, monsters yeah. or, you know, sort of anime characters or any any of the, like, the you know, the huge tapestry of, yes. like, him. You know, com- content that goes into games these days. I mean, it's only a, you know, relatively. It's probably quite a large portion of games have you know, human characters in them, but mm-hmm. there's also a, a horrendous, not horrendous, a humongous amount of <clears throat> um, titles that are you know fantasy based or you know just yeah. not based in the real world. Um, <clears throat> and I mean, I think so. I mean, if you look look at the Last of Us too, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, they were all scans, and you know, you, you're getting still having you know high high-end artists working on them. Yeah. Um, it's not like you can just do a scan and then go, you know, that's done. Yes. Um, you know, stick it straight in a game. There's so much more to it. You know, it needs nuance and it needs stylizing to a point, you know, to get them in a the game. And mm-hmm. You know, it, it's, I think there's still a job there. It's maybe not as artistic as it once was. Um, yeah, but you still need to have the knowledge, right? <laughs> I mean, anatomy exactly, knowledge yeah. and how the yeah. skin works. I guess, yeah, exactly. Like, you have to go through the same process to... To get to a good level to be able to scan to, to basically clean up the scans or make something um, nice out of them for a game or movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, in a lot of cases, them. some yeah, in a lot of cases, something completely different. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you could scan somebody and say, right, we want them to look very different. Yeah. Um, which is what happens quite a lot. You know, it's like you scan a face and use it as a base mm-hmm. and then create a new face from that or 20 new faces. Um, so, yeah, I can't see it. I mean, away. people have been saying this since I started scanning. You know, people have been going, "Oh, you're going to take our jobs." And like, you know, I don't think that. I don't think that's happened. No, <laughs> as far as I can see. De- definitely, I feel that. Like, uh, I was actually I used one of your scans just to practice and sculpt creatures on on top of it. It's actually a different type uh, yeah, of fun, yeah. you know, like taking. Yeah, the it's scan kind of and, different, isn't it? Yeah, it is because you, you have the anatomy yeah. form, so you don't have to start from scratch. But it also yeah. kind of gave me like. Like when I was sculpting on it, I was, this was just a practice. I didn't share it anywhere. Um, just like having fun with it. And I, yeah. and I realized like I paid attention to some of the details on the, on the human body that I couldn't see before, you know? So yeah. for me, it was like adding to my knowledge while trying to have fun and coming up with a concept design idea, you know, out of the scan. So yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, they're, they're kind of, they're great reference. Yeah. You can learn a lot from them. You can see details that you would never see in a photograph or, that you would ever be able to see just by looking at somebody or studying them. You know, yeah. you can see when you take the texture off, you can see a lot and yeah, you can definitely learn a lot from them. Yeah, definitely. Um, mm. Do you, um, 
the, you already shared your game videos, right? On on social media. Um, yeah, suck some that stuff. Just yeah, if you want to, yeah, cool. that'll be great. Uh, yeah, I'll show you. You're a boxing fan. Of course, man. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I actually did boxing for for a little bit, not much, right? I like martial oh, right, art, cool. yeah. <laughs> and then um, I stopped because it's too dangerous, you know. It's, yeah, that's I'll, it. Yeah, you yeah. can lose an ear quite easily. Yeah, I could continue, <laughs> but you know, I wanted to do art, so I stick to art. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> art's better than fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm not really a massive boxing fan at all. I just got sort of um, just became part of this project which was it's quite a weird um so i'll show you the trailer and then we can talk yeah, about it, it if you want. um or maybe see. i can share it uh here as well so we can have the audio let me actually open it yeah you can you can share it there as well do you want to send me a link cool. or should i check on uh it? shall i send you a link hang on i'll send you the youtube video yeah uh, just send it on zoom and i'll just um uh, quickly open it zoom. Hang on, i'll send it on facebook if that's all right because uh, yeah that's fine is that okay? Yeah, it is. I'm gonna just check it on yeah. You can open it on your end as well. I wanna just have the audio as well because I don't know if I can capture your audio from here. Oh, from here. Okay, yeah. right. Well, you you just play it then, and then, then. Yeah, let me actually put it on. Uh, or I'll I'll play it, and then you can. Oh well, I don't know what the best way to do it is. I'm playing it already. So. Okay. Cool. Oh, wait a second. I think I don't have the audio on it. Yeah, I didn't have the audio. I'm going to play from the beginning again. Okay, tell me when you pray and I'll play at the same time. Okay, one, two, three. Cool. 1024. Yeah, so it's... Um, uh, you can watch the trailer. It's all Unity. It's all real time. Um, In Unity? And it, yeah, it's only a teaser. So this is gameplay for his gameplay footage from the engine, but it's you know there's no actual mm -hmm. gameplay fighting in it yet. Well, there is, but not on this video. Why did you choose? Let's watch it, and then I'm gonna ask you questions. Okay. This is amazing. Oh man, <laughs> I already <laughs> like it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Let me actually switch to your screen so you can explain. Um, why did you choose Unity? Why not Unreal Engine? So, um, what happened was uh, that, yeah, like a, I just got a phone call from a guy called Ash who mm -hmm. was in Sheffield, same city, and he just wanted to come in and have a chat. Um, so he came in and like um, we were talking. He was like, oh, I'm making a boxing game. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, right, cool. And then he was like, oh, I need an office. And I was like, okay, well, we've got an office here uh, next to ours or whatever. You know, you can, you can rent that one. Um, so he came in and he rented this office um, and then COVID happened and everything oh. just sort of shut down. And so Ash had already made this boxing game by himself. He's a really clever guy. Oh. You know, he, he built this entire prototype in um, Unity. That's amazing. And he was like, you know, we need a scanning company to work on this. Um, you know, to, to up the, so originally it was going to be, you know, a sort of, you know, a low, like an indie game. But oh. um, he was like, you know, if we can do the scanning, we can... We can bring out like a triple A title, yeah. Um, and so he basically he's sort of the the brains behind it. He's like signed the WBC, like Ring magazine. He's wow. got you know he knows all these fires. He's got everyone interested, and he's a bit of a genius Unity coder as well. Um, so now the room next to ours is has got about thirteen people um, mm -hmm. in the game studio all working away on it, um, and we're doing so we're invested in that we're doing all the scanning and games. You know, we're producing the models for it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, I mean, it's it's in Unity because that's what Ash wrote it. He started with it. Then. Yeah, and we're, we're now, we've got Unity on board now. So Unity are actually helping develop it um, mm -hmm. themselves, like the actual company. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just gone from strength to strength. It went from a small indie to mm -hmm. you know, a AAA title in about four months. Wow. Um, <clears throat> yeah, um, so we're sort of developing the character outside of it. That's amazing. Um, I can sh show you the model. Yeah, that would be great. And then, do you yeah. mind if I ask which, um, I don't know if you can share, like, do you guys know which boxers, like, uh, are... Um, I, can't, I can't say at the minute. Okay. We, there's a few that I could say, but I can't really... Um, That's amazing. Wow. Yeah, no, I, I can't really at the minute because it's complex and you yeah, know, all yeah, sorts yeah. of things signed of people. Um, so this is the guy from the trailer. So it's Johnny Nelson. Um, so he was. he's obviously, like, he's a commentator on Sky now. Yes. Um, so we basically um, 
sort of scanned him and then we made a, a younger version of him which is the one that's in the trailer this is the original scan mm -hmm. and, but yeah it's um so that's you know it's a single 8k map so we're trying to keep it all to 8k and make it all look nice how many polygons is this one do you know uh this one the polygon count uh can you see that in marmoset i don't know actually I don't know if you can i haven't used uh, marmoset for a long time now it it's about 30 30 something thousand oh that's not bad actually it, no it's, you can see it there that's the mesh you could so even go higher i guess right yeah it could go higher yeah i just i mean we sort of did it like this to see how it looked in game and then it looked all right so we were like okay this is a pretty decent poly count mm -hmm. Did you guys have the beard in the game? Yeah, so he's so he's a um, he's actually a commentator. Um, mm -hmm. We just used him as a sort of um, the first test model, really, which is what's in the trailer. Yeah, he will be fighting in the game as his younger younger self as well. Yeah, but he's he's all he's also the technical or the the advisor in the game as well. Mm -hmm. So he's helping us navigate the boxing world in a way. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. so that's. That's sort of what happened. So yeah, we sort of turned into an arm of a games company in the last four months, which is that's amazing. Quite interesting. Is that interesting development? <laughs> <laughs> Bad chip, ten twenty four, making games. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're touching everything actually, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, this is um when do you think like we can see a gameplay of this? Any idea? Uh, well, I, I looked at the build uh, this afternoon. They do like a build show mm. every Friday, um, and it looked really good. I think there's, I think um, there's a lot of stuff still needs doing before there'll be any gameplay mm. uh, being actually shown. But the the physics, everything about it is really cool. It's not, it's yeah, it's not like anything you will have seen before. Wow. Mm. So, so yeah. I mean, now the big the companies are all like biggest studios, right? I mean, two hundred people, three hundred people. Yeah, from the since that's how the games are made so far. But uh, how many guys are working on this? Do you know? Like, can you share? Um, I think it, I'm not sure entire what the the exact number of people, including freelancers and stuff. Um, but uh, I don't I don't know if I can say because I know that there's competitors <laughs> <laughs> to this game watching. So yeah. Oh um, yes. Well, I don't know if they'll be watching this. They probably won't. But I don't want to get in trouble. No, no, with that's fine. That's fine. If you can, you know, I'm sure it's okay. But there's quite there's there's more than ten, you know. It's, it's, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, that's amazing, yeah. right? Like mm -hmm. how like the new tools and stuff helps you to. That's it. You start can make a game, a game now. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to write a game engine anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember when I was yeah. like, I was, I guess I was 22, 23. This is not so long ago, like 10, 12, 12 years ago, right? Yeah, uh, I was talking to my friends and. You still had to like make game engine. Unreal wasn't free at the time. I don't yeah. know if Unity existed at the time. Maybe it did. Um, I don't yeah, remember. I'm not sure how old it is. Yeah, but now you can pretty much. Well, my friends actually they're making a game called Mortal Shell. I don't know if you saw that one. Uh, no, I've not seen it. I'll have a look. Yeah, that's that's a very good game. I will send you a link, or yeah, you can cool. just look at it on YouTube. Like not yeah, many yeah. people mm -hmm. actually with a small budget. It's a very good game. Like for that size, cool. they made it in two yeah, years, yeah. and I guess yeah, it's right, coming out this year. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that's yeah. You can do a lot these days that you didn't used to be able to do, like even ten years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else? What else can we talk about? I don't know. What uh, else do you have to share? <laughs> um, what else have I got that I can show you? Um, I want to extract as much information as possible from you <laughs> while you're talking. Uh, trying to think, uh, what else I can show you that we've been working on. Yeah, um, do you want to do that? And then do you want to also share what people can do on Badship when you sh when you share the website? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to like you know turn it into like a sales pitch or anything. No, 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 it's good. Um, it's good, man. I mean, uh, um, well, we, we can talk about like if you want. Um, I can show you. Hang on, let's hang out. Don't close that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I mean, we've got some. You know, we've been working on. So we we're working on Death Stranding. Oh. Oh, we did a cool. load of stuff on that. We did a lot of work on um, Hellblade 2. Um, what else have we been doing? That oh, um, Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Uh, oh, that sort of older stuff. But these are the three big titles that we've been working on the last you know, mm -hmm. year, basically. And we've just done another really big one for a big studio who I can't say. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is kind of going back to what I was saying earlier. Like, um, you know, rather than doing lots of smaller projects that take up a lot of time, we kind yeah. of we're now at a point where we can hold out for the the nice big 
sort of game projects that we're going to really enjoy and mm -hmm. you know going to bring something to the company as well um when i say company i feel like a bit of a fraud because it's only two people but like <laughs> <laughs> well i mean <laughs> <It's kinda> <laughs> no i mean you're you guys are doing amazing stuff i actually i was actually surprised that it's only you and chris like when you say two i'm like wow yeah, I mean, well, we do have help. You know, we do have freelancers and stuff that help yeah. us a lot, especially Celine. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's not there are other people that that help out. Um, but that shows how efficient yeah. you are, the way you work. So, you know, yeah, it's kind of a, a, a cross between efficiency and like kind of manic working. <laughs> 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 this is <laughs> it's a bit of both. How many hours a day <laughs> do you work? Um, it depends. Uh, during the lockdown, I was doing sort of seven till seven kind of thing. 12 hours. Um, so like, like 12 hours, yeah. Um, when I was younger and when I first started the company, I was, well, before I started this, I was doing, uh, I was working full day at my job. Um, and then I was coming home and I'm working till four, five in the morning sometimes wow. on, an, on my freelance stuff and then sleeping for like three hours and then getting up and driving 50 miles and then doing that for, you know, like weeks and weeks on end um, to try and save up enough money to start the company. Um, and that nearly... That took its toll. I think I turned a sort of greeny gray sort of color. <laughs> 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 I mean, but there's a price that you have to pay, right? I mean, obviously, the way that you're structuring this, I feel like you have a long term plan instead of like achieving every, everything you want in a couple of years or three years, right? I mean, it's been 12 years you're, you're doing this right now. Yeah. Yeah. I think, honestly, I think the first seven or eight years of, we were just learning um, how to to sort of run a business and how to, um, you know, sort of present yourself and how to market yourself. And all, it was a long time, you know, cause I'd never done anything like that before. And mm -hmm. you know, I think it's, some people just seem naturally good at business. You know, they'll just go in and like hire a hundred people and, you know, build a startup, it, yeah. and, you know, do an IPO. And, you know, it's just all, <laughs> you know, like these sort of like, you know, Silicon Valley people. Yes. I don't know how they do that. Um, but yeah, I feel like the first eight years was kind of learning, um, the last two to three years has been steady growth. And then I think the next three to sort of five years is going to be uh, diversifying um, and sort of like trying to build on those new sort mm -hmm. of companies that we're, that we're working on now. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's my plan. I don't really have any plan beyond the next sort of five or six years, mm -hmm. other than I would like to really develop what we have at the moment into something really big. Um, but yeah, I don't know whether that will work or not. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, you probably realize I'm not a particularly confident business person. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a good thing, like you mentioned, because if you're too confident, you, you will stop the growth, right? You could do, yeah. But I mean, confident people convince other people. And, yeah. You know, confidence kind of inspires, you know, people to, to help you and, you know, work with you and stuff. Whereas I think that's what's held me back a little bit. No, I, I honestly, um, like when I look at, you as a person that I, I know you for a while, but I mean, not in person. We never met, unfortunately, face no, to no, face. No. Hopefully, Probably you will well. come here after this virus situation and we can hang out all oh, yeah, barbecue yeah. for you and with Chris. Yeah, that'd be cool. awesome. yeah we have, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. We have a spare room for guests here. I mean, cool. um, when I look at you, I feel like you're a very successful person. Like, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes I even talk to my wife, I'm like, look at this. I mean, this guy started a business, he was an artist. Look where he's going now. I can see that maybe maybe you won't see it yourself. You know, people tell me stuff like that way as well. I feel like I'm not yeah, confident yeah. enough. But my wife is like, if you do it this way, if you can keep going, then no one can stop yeah, you. Yeah, that, that's it. Yeah, that's the thing. And like, you know, I show people your work. And I'm like, look what Sam X done. It's amazing. And everyone's <laughs> like, yeah, that's fucking awesome. Like, and like, um, nice. yeah, and like you yourself, like you say, like you're kind of, you don't feel confident in it. No. Which is why, I think that is why you're so good. Because you constantly want to get better and learn and you know do new things, and I think as soon as you lose that, you're just going to go, "Wow, look at me!" Yeah, I mean, you're telling me now. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. I mean, you're telling me, yeah, that that is why you're so good. But I'm I, honestly, like, when I look at it in my head, I'm like, he's just trying to be nice to me. The one people. That's what I think you're doing to me. And I think there comes a point where, where you kind of, yeah. Well, that, that's what happens, and he sort of. I guess the, the the part of you that is a little bit, you know, the tiny little bit of ego that you might have, yeah. you maybe need to recognize that a little bit and like work on that. And that can kind of get you through things, you know, when you feel like you can't do something because, you know, or you, you want to try and do something or you're trying to do something and you have, you don't have any faith in it. Yeah. I think, 
when you sometimes, I mean, sometimes what I try and do is like take a look back at everything that you've done and just say, imagine doing that again and how much time and effort that took. You and just that's touched kind of, it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, th- you know what happened? Like on the 10 year mark, I actually looked back at my life and I told, like that was actually when I, when I was married for 10 years, right? Yeah. And I was like, I told my wife, look how far we came from nothing. And I was, I was surprised. I'm like, 10 years can do this. And we didn't even try hard enough, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine we just, if you were. Yeah. Imagine if you try yeah. harder. And then I was like, I was telling my wife, I'm kind of like upset that I didn't do what I should have done when I was 20 years old, when I was 22, 25. Yeah. And then I, I was like, so if I didn't do it at the time, now I understand it. Now I know how the flow goes. Now I know what I need to do. So maybe yeah, I should mm-hmm. do it now for the next 10 years and then look back and, you yeah, know. look back and see how much you've done. Yeah, and yeah. I guarantee you it'll be a lot more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going to be a lot more because now with the knowledge, yeah. you know. And I started reading a lot of books about business, about like selling, about everything. You know, I'm not just focused on the art, which I think what artists are missing you know, in the industry, when, when you talk to them, they just know about art and how to make characters yeah. or how, how to make environments. But as soon as you ask them, how can you get discounts on, the, on this or how can you sell your product? They don't know. $2 on yeah. artist station, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so. And I think that that's definitely a trait of artists is to, you know, focus heavily on one one specific thing and be absolutely amazing at it. Yeah. Whereas I think if you, and that that's brilliant for employers, you know, when you look at it that way, if you're an employer yeah. and you've got, yeah, this guy, he does a, world's most amazing models it's like get him you know and that that person will then but if that person can then try and develop a different side of their you know the, well a different sort of set of skills in that you know learning to sort of promote themselves and sell their work and you know they, they can have a completely different experience in the jobs industry they don't have to necessarily work for somebody you know you could have a successful freelance career or you could have a successful career you know making your own website selling stuff or you know you yeah. do what we did or what you're doing now, you know, there's lots of different paths in, in the industry. And I think uh, like a lot of them are restricted. Well, a lot of them are aren't accessible to a lot of artists because they feel like they haven't got the experience or the knowledge of selling and all the sort of business side of things. Mm, yeah. And I kind of feel like that's something that is sort of missing in the industry. Like people aren't really taught how to, you know, sort of create their own businesses and work for themselves. It's something that isn't really part of education. Part Which of education, is strange. Either. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know what I realized? Um, the thing, the difference between working yourself, not depending on a company, not a studio or something like that, is actually huge because a lot of people, artists ask me, how can I get into this company, work there, work here, you know? Um, I always tell them, to think about your future, not just that company. Because mm. if you can uh, find a way to survive, imagine like this is a like a forest and we have to survive, you know, somehow like a, like a wolf or a lion, right? Yeah, we have to yeah. hunt. If we can do that without being hunted or without getting um, left over from others, you know, um, I don't know how to say it in a good way. I don't mean it in a bad way, but if you, if you have I that, I know what you mean. Yeah. If you have that knowledge and if you can survive, then actually working for even on games for companies becomes more interesting, you know, because yes. you don't have to do it. It just comes from your passion and, exactly. uh, you know, yeah. it's a, it's a huge difference. When you're yeah. forced to work, when, when you're forced to work, it's just like, it's like prison. Yeah. You know what I mean? I totally agree. Yeah. And yeah, so, there is a, there's a huge amount of freedom that comes with being self-employed or, you know, having your own company. There's yeah. the knowledge that at any time, if you want to, you don't have to go to work or, you know, you can go on holiday for a month and yeah. things aren't going to necessarily, you know, disappear. Yeah. And yeah, for me, it's like since I'm working from home. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, you think? No, no, you, no, you go. Yeah, <laughs> since I'm working from home, I'm not even taking vacation. You know, the work is actually the mm-hmm. fun part. I sleep like five hours every night. Five hours. Yeah. That's it's not enough. But five hours. Yeah, it's not enough. <laughs> like you did like three hours, right? Now yeah, I yeah. only sleep five hours, but I, I think about it this way. I'm like ten years from now. Um, I'm gonna enjoy the not money, not financial wise. It will come. Like yeah. you can, we can grow. Like make tons of money as as an artist as well. Yeah. But there's like other satisfactions that I can, I can actually, I won't regret that I didn't do this. I didn't do that. You know? Yeah, exactly. That's it. It's, it's the knowledge that you're not going to regret what you're doing. Yeah. And I think so I'm, I'm trying, just, you know? Yeah. So well, that's, that's it. And that's the satisfying thing, isn't it? I think if you're just sat at a desk with, you know, wishing that you were doing something else or, yeah. you know, that, that that's when the problems start. 
Yeah. Um, and that's when unhappiness and, you know, that all that sort of stuff starts to set in. <clears throat> yeah, it's, yeah, it's just a different path. I think it's harder. It is, yes. But I think it's ultimately much, much better, much more rewarding. More rewarding. Um, and, and when you say harder, um, obviously I'm not in your place, but I, I feel like you wouldn't care about it because there there is a sort of joy in that uh, pain that you go through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You have highs where you're like, this is amazing. I love this. Yeah. And, you know, when I was working for studios and stuff, I mean, it was still it was really exciting, you know, when we released a trailer and stuff, but it was never like, it was never mine. You know, yeah. it, was, Child. it was never the... Yeah, there was never the same amount of excitement as whenever, you know, you're like, oh, you know, look what we did together, you know, my business partner and that. And then, yeah. you know, it's something that we've achieved and it's it's just, you know, it's a different experience, I think. Um, but it does come with its stress yes. and, you know, Confident, worry and definitely. all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And even looking back at the history, like Da Vinci, for example, right? He wasn't just doing one thing. No. he was <laughs> He was actually master at everything. Yeah, yeah, trying a lot of stuff, yeah. just seeing what, what he liked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And there's actually yeah. a study, a, a research that shows that all the successful people, like on the level of Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, all of that, they actually plan their life on a long-term compound effect plan, you know, like they steadily grow, grow on, on different areas. Like Elon Musk, for example, there was an article I was reading how he actually built like several multi-billion dollar businesses and they're all successful, you know, crazy yeah. successful, mm -hmm. right? I mean, Tesla was, everyone was like, it's going to fail. Now it's actually dominating the whole car market and not just that yeah. battery market, AI, you know, self-driving, everything. It's just insane, yeah. like how much work they're doing. And yeah, this guy yeah. is like working crazy, like 85 hours a week. Yeah, it's mad. <laughs> it's madness, yeah. It's just insane. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, um, you know, there's actually, he, he planned all of this to achieve it on a longer term plan instead of like, mm. I want to, have all of this in two years you know that's not gonna work yeah no that never works no that's, yeah. that's not the way to do it i think somebody told me if, if it's not working after seven years then stop <laughs> <laughs> and that, that, that's kind of the uh, the sort okay. of time scale that you should be working to yeah seven years yeah and yeah. I, I even when i look at my art side like when i started sculpting characters i didn't have a i was actually 18 or 17 if i remember correctly I wasn't planning to work for any game studios or VFX companies. You know, I was just mm. like seeing the artist works and I'm like, how do they make these characters? I need to learn how to do that. And then slowly I realized I can make money with it. You know, I wanted to buy a computer. I didn't have a good, good machine to work with it. I needed yeah. something better. So I was like, how can I make money with this? Then I realized I can make some money to do this and then started growing. And then since then my life changed, you know, yeah. so mm -hmm. it's just a steady growth. Yeah, that's it. I think if you love something, then you can find a way to make a living out of it. Yeah. I think that's kind of the, the way to look at it. You know, if you truly are passionate about it, then, you know, other people will see that and whatever you're doing, you can find a way to, to make money from it. Yeah. And, and that, you know, that then becomes your, your lifestyle and your passion and your, your sort of income, yeah. which is, which is awesome. Yeah. I feel like I'm also like trying to, I love curiosity and you know I want to do I want to make business for sure like I want to have my own business not just one maybe multiple businesses yeah not just in CG if I can I'm planning actually to do something out of CG as well but yeah that, that's the way to go I think yeah because <laughs> I'm, I'm curious you know I want to I want to know how I can achieve like something that others yeah. are like it's impossible to do you know exactly. <laughs> that, that what actually, are you capable of yeah <laughs> yeah and because for me, it's like everyone can do it. It's just like you need to believe in yourself and start trying and keep pushing to, to exactly, without giving yeah. up, you know? Yeah. I mean, if Donald Trump made a billion dollars, <laughs> you, can, you can literally do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> yeah. um, you wanted to show something in ZBrush. Do you want to do that? And then we finish it up after. Uh, what what did you want me to show you? I don't know. You said maybe I can do something in ZBrush. I don't know if you want to do anything or you want uh, to. I'm trying to think what I could show you. Um, I mean, everything that I do is like quite kind of like sort of nitpicky kind of cleaning scan sort of stuff. Hmm. Um, do you mean like a sort of little demo or something? I don't know. Is there anything that you think you want to show, like talk about? You don't have to. I mean, um, it's just... I'm just trying to trying to think what I could show you that um, would be quite an interesting. Maybe a couple of tips. Sort of uh, yeah, I can show you. Uh, I mean, it's only really sort of scan cleanup stuff that I kind of can tip on, if you know. What yeah, I mean. yeah. <laughs> um, 
I can show you a cool little trick uh, if I can just find a raw scan. That's good. Uh, That'll be good. Uh, let's have a look. And then, it, and then after this, you can show how people can sell on Batship. When I upload this video, they can watch it and see how they can yeah. use it, mm -hmm. maybe, and then we we'll finish it off. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is this a raw scan? It is a raw scan. It's a bit too good, though. I really want a, a, quite a crap one. <laughs> <laughs> well, this uh, is a cleaned-up yeah. version, right? But you, you already yeah, cleaned. No, this is no, this is. This is this scan. One. Oh no, that's a cleaned-up. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I saw the is nose. It, ah, here we go. Well, yeah, it's pretty okay, close. Right, it's not bad, it's quite noisy. So I'll show you a cool little trick then. Um, so like, let's say you've got a load of like noise, like this sort of stuff, you know, like hair. What is that on the back on of the head? Uh, that's a pole. Oh. So that's to keep their head in position. Oh, so right, it's, what? It's got, if the texture was on that, you would see it's got scale on it and it's got, um, you know, also like a, yeah, it's basically a scale marker and to keep their head in the same oh, position. So when they're doing facts, it feels like it a sci-fi. Like, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, actually, I'll, just, I'll have to just project this a little bit just to show you because you need to do it on a on a cleaned mesh. Oh, okay. Uh, let me just project this a little bit here. Oh, hang on, my phone's in the way. Oh, shit. <laughs> you dropped <laughs> me. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I dropped you. <laughs> put you down here. <laughs> it hurts. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, let me just project this a second. Sorry, it's been a bit slow. Need That's to fine. My PC. It's getting that a bit a, slow. This one. It's not a problem. No, I mean people can see the the real time pain that artists go through. To the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've got something like um, so if you're doing cleaning up scans, generally what we do is we retopologize the raw scans. So mm. we would take like something like this, we'd fully retop it. Uh, as it is, so you get the mesh over the top. We just use Wrap Three for that, which is really easy. Oh! But then to get to get rid of this stuff, like what a lot of people do is they'll go in and they'll kind of just go, you know, just sort of like it's, oh, you know, up by hand. Yeah, that's what I do as well. You know, we just sort of splurge all over it with the smooth brush. If you know what I mean, and that's yeah, you know, that ruins a lot of details. So what you can do um, is you can actually if you go to masking uh, and then you do mask by smoothness with range ten. Fall off a hundred. Mm -hmm. So it kind of isolates the uh, oh. bumpy bits, and then if you do a little invert on the mask, and then just hide the mask, what you can actually do then is you can drop down the subdivision levels, and you can actually remove oh. only that stuff, which is quite quite neat. And then you can keep going up the subdivision levels, mask by smoothness, invert. Oh no, sorry. Let's go back up to the highest. And then hide the mask again. Yeah, just invert it. I've actually got a little button here that does it. But um, yeah, you just drop down a level, and just on each level, you can just remove. Wow. You can do it on things like you know, like stubble and stuff, and um, you end up not actually destroying uh, all the details. That is interesting. It's quite a cool way of. Um, yeah, very cool. You know, sort of cleaning up without actually ruining all the underlying detail. This is quite noisy here. And I'm just doing this really quickly, and you know, obviously I wouldn't do it this quickly. But yeah, I mean that's that's how we sort of get rid of beards and you know hair on people's arms and stuff. It works really well on um, Don. <laughs> yeah, 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 Don. Yeah, I mean you, you can actually just do it on a big hairy body and just do like generic smooth, and it just kind of will sort of knock it down in the lower levels. Do you um, do it on the face as well? If they've got stubble or hair and stuff, you mm -hmm. know, like if you want to get rid of eyebrows and things, you know, you can sort of. You know, knock them out a bit like that, but you really want to be doing it on the lower levels mm -hmm. um, rather than the highest one. Because if you do it on the highest one, you actually start losing. You know, you'll start sort of smoothing yeah. secondary details and stuff, which you don't want to um, do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can get rid of little bits like that. You know, have you guys tried to uh, print <laughs> your scans? Yeah, yeah. Or, or do yeah, something. Yeah, we did already. We did already. Oh, yeah. Let me show you this. I'll show you one. It's really cool. Uh. We did the, uh, where is he? This one. So this was a company called Mamaki. Oh, that, that really is cool. Crazy. That it's cool, is isn't cool. it? Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's really, really, really detailed. And it's uh, like a, it's like a cross between an inkjet printer and a, some sort of STL. I don't really know how hmm. 3D printers work. 
but yeah, it looks really cool. It's a nice little thing to have on your coffee table. <laughs> it's just quite weird. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this guy's famous now, right? You're using it for everything. Um, <laughs> it's all over. Brian, the- <laughs> yeah. Brian's, Brian's all over the place. We're actually, um, we're, we're planning to send him into space. <laughs> weird. <laughs> so we had like, what do you um, mean? Like for real? Like sending what? Yeah, like- yeah. What? Well, one of the, one of the things we're we're maybe going to do on Scan Store as a competition <laughs> is we're going to we, we've got this company that send uh, they send your ashes into space basically on a oh, really wow. big hot air balloon, not hot air balloon, a weather balloon, uh-huh. and we were going to offer a, a chance for somebody to come and get scanned, and then we'd print them on this Namaki printer, mm-hmm. and then send that into space, and then take photos of them in space you know so it'd be like a, be the closest you're going to get to having a photo in space <laughs> so, that is cool like it's, yeah, we it's affordable it cool. <laughs> yeah yeah well it's still quite expensive but it'd be like a competition more affordable than like actually going to a space ride. oh yeah 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 way more <laughs> that is interesting have you yeah. thought about like yeah. doing anything on the on the printing side like business wise or no i don't really know the industry i don't i actually don't understand how it makes money do you know what mm. I mean? Because I think the materials are so expensive and the time, the, the, the amount of time it takes to produce a model is, you know, this printer I think is a quarter of a million pounds. Wow. Um, quarter of yeah, a million. And wow, that's expensive. And I don't, I don't even want to know how much the, the ink is for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's probably a million pounds. <laughs> <for like> a, <laughs> you have to fill it up. <laughs> I mean, there is like, uh, I don't know if you know about that. I, I talked about it in my previous uh, episodes of the podcast. If you watched like, uh, every artist almost now is involved somehow with 3D printing. Yeah. They're, mm-hmm. they're using Form 2 or Form 3. That's the most famous yeah. one. They're it's awesome, like, aren't they? Yeah, they're awesome. And it's like $3,400 for Form 3. Yeah. And then uh, one cartridge costs like about $150 and, yeah. and goes up to $400. And you can print about like maybe three or four small, you know, like this. Size. Oh, is that all? Yeah. It's quite expensive then, isn't it? It is expensive, yeah. I think it's, mm. I was like actually thinking to print the characters that I made. Like one of them actually you have yeah. it on your website. I was, th- I, I, I want to print that, uh, the monster that I made. Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah. I want to print it yeah. on a big size, but I'm thinking like to mold it maybe and, you know, uh, make a mold and then copy it and then sell it on my website. Copy it and sell yeah. it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know a guy that makes molds. So I'll send you some details. Oh, that would be cool. That would yeah. be cool. Yeah, I, th- I think the thing with molds, from what I learned about it, because we thought about casting and doing so, like a range of like anatomy models. Uh-huh. Um, they don't last forever. From what I, what I can tell, there's two types, basically. Mm-hmm. The cheaper end, you can maybe make like, like a 500 models from it. What, 500? You know, then, That's not bad. I think... No, yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I remember it was quite a few years ago we talked about it with them. But yeah, I mean, it seems, I think it was about £5,000 or something. £5,000 for one, one, one more? That's expensive. That might have been for a full full production run. Oh, of, wow. Yeah, probably. Um, about four or 500 characters or something like that. I can't mm-hmm. remember. This but then, yeah, making me- the mold was a, yeah, mm-hmm. I think there's a cheaper, cheaper way to do it. But. Yeah. I'm thinking like to, mm-hmm. I don't know, like, just try it myself in my garage, you know, make 20 copies, yeah. 100 copies maximum, if, if it sells, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, do it. Give it a go and see. Yeah, and yeah, I might if, actually, you can, if you can print it. Just. Yeah, that would be interesting. It's going to take time to print, but the, the problem is, like, I, I, I'm i not sure which printer to buy. You know, there's, like, different forms, like, yeah, FDM, yeah. I don't know if it was, if I'm saying it correctly, but the, the form tree is, like, using resin and then use UV lights to solidify the resin, and it takes time to yeah. print. But the quality is like is amazing. It captures all the yeah, details, yeah. you know. So I want to I want to try using that. So yeah, I think that's the one. We've got a little um, like extruder printer. I hmm. can't remember. I don't know what make it is, but it, I mean it's good for making bits for the scanner. But it's you know it's not amazing quality. Everything's hmm. got little lines all over it. Yeah, no, those are this the the, the four three actually. If you search on the website like, later or whatever. I mean, yeah, they, yeah, they don't like, create any yeah. line. It's just smooth and captures all the yeah, details. It's, yeah, I've seen the prints. They look amazing. It's amazing, right? But it's they expensive. Stink, though, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Don't they really smell? <laughs> uh, th- there is a smell, but because of the way they are doing it, is there's a cartridge, you know? Oh, so right, it's not okay. like you're not pouring the, the resin into the printer. Uh, okay. <laughs> so it's like an actual, looks feels like a real 2D printer, but it's 3D, so yeah, you don't yeah. smell anything. And then you have to oh, keep the, cool. the, the, the thing closed all the time, so... Yeah, yeah, oh, that's, that's cool. Because somebody know. told me they really smelled, but that must have been the older ones. Yeah, yeah, probably the yeah. older ones. 
I mean, uh, I was talking to a guy like on the previous episode, and he, he said he has one, and he didn't. He he's actually printing in his room where he sleeps. Oh he right, really? Have, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So, and then cool. he was yeah, and I asked him how much does it cost. I mean, is it better to go with this? It's like three thousand four hundred dollars. Not it's not cheap. It's pretty expensive. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, yes, it's totally worth it because you you'll save time you're not gonna waste time you know eventually like you don't have yeah. to sand it or things like that exactly yeah and sanding it we've tried with some of our prints and it's just a, it's a waste of time you end up ruining <laughs> everything you do yeah so, yeah yeah so that's mm. that's the thing um yeah do you want to also share for the last thing um how bad ship works because i might yeah mm -hmm. um, and, the, and then when you're planning to release it next tuesday uh hopefully yeah, Monday or Tuesday, we're hoping. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like, um, yeah, next week. But it'll be before you release this, hopefully. So Yeah. I'll, if I'll, not, I'll, yes. I, I yeah. think I'm going to release this on Tuesday, so it probably will be the same time as Yeah, as that'll you. be all right. It'll probably be Tuesday morning we do this. I would have yeah. thought the latest. So Unless we have some horrendous technical issue that we can't fix. Oh, but hopefully yes. not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's basically just a marketplace. Um like a lot of the other ones, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, th that business model doesn't really differ that much. You know, you, you we host your files um, uh, and we take a commission on the, you know, yeah. the payment that, that, that we sell. Yeah. Um, but we've got like a nice licensing system. So we've got personal licenses, we've got business R&D. We basically copied the licensing system from ScanStore. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at this, and we've copied these because we we sold you know hundreds of thousands of these, and we know the system works. Um, so you know you've got your different licenses. So basically, you've got a commercial or a yeah personal license, which is for hobbyists, artists, you know, people who want to use it for their own personal projects. We've got yeah. a business R and D license, which is for a studio that wants to perhaps integrate it into their pipeline, but don't know whether they want to shell out for the full um, business commercial license. And then obviously we've got the full commercial mm -hmm. license so what this i mean a lot of sites have this now but what it essentially allows you to do is to make your product affordable to mm -hmm. you know everybody so artists and it also allows you to uh, make some money by selling commercially mm -hmm. um, and a lot of things i've heard of people saying oh you know i can't make my my product too expensive because people won't buy it yeah um well the, you know this kind of allows you to to do that so you can make it cheap and expensive at the same time yeah. Um, and you're selling to the people that have the money to, to buy it, basically. Yeah. Um, so I've actually written a whole article that's on here about what your products are worth. So um, we've written a whole thing. It's got like a, you know, this oh, is all good. my sort of, yeah, so this is all my knowledge, basically, on it, <laughs> condensed down into a little <laughs> sort of article. So it's kind of like, you know, how, to, how can you price your, your article and have a little sort of scale and, you know, how to figure out how useful your model is and what that level of usefulness how that translates into its its value mm -hmm. um which should be quite useful for a lot of people i hope um but yeah i mean so basically it's you if you want to buy stuff it's the same as any other store you just go on and buy it if you want to open a store you can go in you can apply for an account filling your details and um, and then you get a login but yeah so from when you log in you basically get a um it's it's kind of an enterprise level like marketplace, so you've got really mm -hmm. powerful selling tools. So you can you can go through all your um, sales. You can see who's bought what, when, where, like what they paid for it, how much commission you've got. Um, you can upload products. So you can go in here and you can, you know, so you've got all your um, sort of product details here. You can add images. Um, you can set all the specs. Uh, you can set all your download files. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's basically a um, very comprehensive like yeah it's 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 a lot more there's a, you can do a lot more with it than you can mm -hmm. with a very simple sort of like selling website. Um, you can yeah, they don't sales. give you data. They just like you sold this. Exactly. Yeah, you don't, you yeah. don't get real data, but this you, you get quite a lot of stuff. Um, you can you can generate sales reports. Um, you know, you can look at how much you made per categories. Um, you know, most active customer locations. You can see where mm. your sales are coming from. Um, shipping up, yeah, that shouldn't be there. Um, but yeah, there's lots of um, there's lots of power behind it. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, we sort of figured that we want to give people more than a you know a normal mm -hmm. 
So a marketplace, you can look at your top 10 customers. Um, I mean, this is just a sort of, um, this is a like, all the data. you know, no one's, no one's bought anything yet. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can even see where, you know, how people are paying and stuff. Yeah. You know, it's, it's that is cool. great. I mean, yeah. uh, I was actually shocked when you told me how much you spend on this. It's insane. But now I can see yeah, why it's, it's like so much work. Hmm. Yeah, it's 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 an amazing amount of work. Yeah, I mean, it's not been it's not been that much fun building it. <laughs> I'd say there's so many things to consider. But I can tell um, you, the front page looks great. Like, absolutely looks great. Yeah. I wouldn't change anything about much. it. Yeah, I quite quite like it. it's quite cool. It's a bit like a mad nightclub. Yes, um, yes, that was the idea, yeah. or you just came up on the way it happened. Yeah, it, I wanted it to look quite sort of different. If you know what I mean, I wanted quite a stark, sort of bright. Kind yeah. of crazy looking thing, um, but quite clean as well. We, we're kind of, we're kind of thinking of it as like the Netflix of digital. So mm-hmm. I, I mean, the the ultimate goal for this is obviously we want it to be a marketplace and we want to sell other people's stuff. But what we really want to do is to actually open it up as a studio. Mm-hmm. So at some point we're going to try and launch something. We'll probably call it Badship Studio. So people yeah, get I mean, something, you know, and it, because obviously, like, yeah, many artists. Whatever not suits even, you best. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can imagine if I'm in a situation like I, I financially, I need some money. Yeah, why not? Mm-hmm. Uh, you pay me yeah. something, half of it, and the, then the, you sell it, and then we share the rest. Exactly. That's, a, yeah, that's such or, a great business model, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, it relies on us using the best artists. If you know, yeah. what I mean? it's it's going to be, you know, hopefully it'll be quite an exclusive group of people that we have working for us. It won't just be like a case of I need some money. I better go to bad shit bank. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I think it should be a, yeah. Yeah, sort of a teamwork thing, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's that's gonna blow up. I, I feel like, yeah, it's very good. I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I think it can genuinely. I think if we can do, if we can change people's minds about pricing their products low, and if we can create an open door studio, uh, yeah. I think we can actually sort of maybe. You know, yeah. actually, part of the reason I started doing podcasts is like to educate people. You know, I get so many questions mm-hmm. from people. They have no idea how the industry works. They just want to become an artist. You know, these kind yeah. of inform- mm-hmm. information is like so valuable. Like if yeah. if you, if I mean, kind of like help everyone to understand their value prices, you know, how much work they yeah. should do. Mm-hmm. And it's it's going to help the industry to grow, I think, you know. Yeah. Do, you, do you think? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I think you want to say no. Something. I wasn't. I wasn't going to. Oh. Well, I was going to say. I think understanding your value goes a little way to helping to sort of um, take away from the like you were saying earlier, like the lack of confidence. You know, yeah. if you understand your value a little bit more, yeah, I think it can help you with your confidence and what you do as an artist. Yeah. <laughs> what did I wanted to say? I forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, no, don't oh. be. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, let me think for a second. Maybe I'll remember it. What was the conversation before it? Uh, we were talking about something. <laughs> <laughs> I think, <laughs> yeah, I, I think we are going too long. Um, <laughs> it's all right. I'm enjoying it. Oh, uh, Actually, this is what I wanted to ask you. Do you think um, like later on, I know you're super busy, but we could do a live session to answer questions and educate yeah. people about prices, you know? Um, mm, I'd love to. You know, I think that would be great because honestly, I think you are the only artist that I know who is a very good businessman as well. Uh, I think I don't know if there's a, good. who. I mean, I don't know. Do you uh, know any other? Chris Chris Costa's doing pretty well. He's yeah, his, his courses. Uh, yeah. Uh, this, I think there's quite a few people who know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I think in, in terms of actually making businesses out of, I mean, I I, I sort of wince a little bit when I call myself an artist because I'm just a. Just, Cheesy scanner. <laughs> no, no, you're not. No, trust me. I, I know what it takes to. I mean, you you have the knowledge. If you don't have the knowledge, you cannot make those scans look great. So, true. I know yeah, what you're yes, dealing yeah. with. So, don't try yes. to hide that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'd love to do that. That'd be awesome. I'd love to like try and help people figure out what they're worth and how yeah. to make a, a successful career outside of this standard route. Yeah, you know because I, mean? I feel like um, <laughs> keeping the job is good, like working in the studio and all that. But mm-hmm. I mean, the thing is, like, uh, what I always—I I was actually talking to a friend of mine. I make a character for for a job or for a, f- a freelance job or something, and do it once and make money with it only once. You know, I don't. Yeah. There is exactly. no passive income, which yeah, is mm-hmm. which is why. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm kind of like it's kind of wasted, you know. Well, that's it, and I think like. 
you know, I think maybe you and I have had discussions before about what you can make passively from a single model. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't mind. mind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, I I know of models, you know, that that can generate, you know, a single model. You can make twenty or thirty thousand pounds a mm -hmm. year. So you know, thirty thousand dollars a year, kind of a thing. Yeah, um, that's that's and amazing. That, you know. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy, and a lot of people don't realize this, and that, that's why whenever I see these $2 things, it, like, it really, I'm like, you're really wasting your talent yeah. here, you know? <clears throat> that is why I'm actually, like, I'm making, I don't know if you saw, I made a demon. It's a short yeah, tutorial, awesome. right? I, yeah, yeah. I just put some description, some information that what went through my mind to, to make that demon. I'm putting it on yeah. YouTube for free. I mean, yeah. either I should sell it for five, I mean... If I go the same route as other artists, five dollar, ten dollar, I don't need that five yeah, ten dollar. Yeah. You know, it doesn't change yeah, my doesn't, life in yeah. any way. Exactly. So I would give it yeah. for free because I know, like, I will focus on other things, bigger stuff too. To, well, that's it, and it's know? a good do stuff like that. It's a good way to sort of you know figure out how to do things the right way as well. So if you do end up making a mega tutorial, you know, now you've got experience yes. doing that. You can go right. So I'm going to make a paid for one now, and it's going to be you know ten hours long or whatever, and you know I'm going to use all the stuff that I've learned, and people will no because of your other tutorials you, you can do a yeah. good job so it's you know it's kind of building that sort of samak brand in a way yeah <laughs> yes that's um yeah. yeah definitely and you know when i look mm -hmm. at like artists like selling cheap like two dollar five dollar ten dollar they're, they're, they're actually making a competition between themselves you know exactly. whoever is yeah. cheaper i'm cheaper but i'm better than yeah. the other one the, the other artist exactly <laughs> so yeah that's it <laughs> It's just, it's, it's ludicrous. <laughs> that's going to fail. Like, I mean, that's not a good business plan. <laughs> no, exactly. I mean, what, what, what costs a dollar? What, what can you buy? Well, say, say $2. What can you buy for $2? Like the most worthless thing I can imagine. Coca-Cola. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Like a can of Coke. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's basically like sugar water poured into a tin. Like, <laughs> Lots of sugar. Is, yeah. Is that worth the same as... 10 years of your life learning how to do something yeah. and spending days and days pouring over it. It's very sad yeah. to be honest. Like I, yeah, it is. I, yeah. It's just sad. I don't understand the, the mindset that goes no. behind that. No, I don't understand it either. And I don't understand why people aren't the people who are responsible for those places where they're sold aren't sort of doing something about it Yeah, because they're supposedly like, you know, pillars of the community and that they're, you know, do you know what I mean? I think that, yeah, that yeah. is their responsibility as well. Um, so, yeah. That's why I feel like there should be an education, like what, you, what you're doing. Uh, do you guys have any sort of service? Like if I come to your website, Batship, and I'm, I want to sell my creature, right? Uh, I'm saying like, yeah. I want to mm -hmm. sell this. Um, yeah. And I don't know how much I'm going to price it. I have no clue about business. I'm just like, how, can, how much can I make from this? Yeah. Can, can you just do it, like price it and ed educate people or... Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, we're offering a service. Uh, I mean, there's nothing really on the front page at the minute. Um, there probably will be a banner on here somewhere. Mm -hmm. But we're um, we're going to offer a service whereby you can email me or Chris, um, and we'll basically look at your product and we'll sort of like see how evaluate. where it should be priced and evaluate it and say this is what we think. Mm -hmm. um, we're also not going to allow people to put two dollar products on. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's not going to happen. If you want to sell two dollar products, sell it somewhere else. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, it's. I mean, so I mean, if you think about it this way, so this our site runs on Amazon S three, uh, which is the, probably the fastest hmm. way to you know, scale a site. Yeah. For if somebody puts a two gigabyte two dollar product on our site, it's going to cost about one dollar thirty <laughs> just for the, <laughs> the hosting cost. <laughs> so like. <laughs> You know, it's just totally pointless. Yeah, it is pointless. And then yeah. it's like people can understand like 12 years of experience you have behind us. And before that, you were, yeah. you were working in a studio. So that's a lot of knowledge that, you know, you have seen the both both sides basically. Yeah, you know? mm -hmm. yeah so that's it. That is yeah, great. I mean, I've worked at studios and watched, you know, studios spend, you know, tens of thousands on um, assets from Turbo Squid and, you know, places like that. I think mm -hmm. that's when I sort of started to realize the value of these these products and why that yeah. was sort of the future. Um, so you, yeah, you, you know, as I said, like earlier in the in the podcast when we were talking, um, I actually see artists are lowballing themselves when they want to go to studios, like really charge really cheap prices. Really? Yeah, I mean everywhere. 
It's insane. Yeah, right. Like they don't know how much yeah. they should charge as a salary, for example. It's just like I don't know. Yeah. Like uh, <laughs> if I if I have to ch charge like that, I'm not gonna work in this industry. <laughs> you know, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? It. Yeah, it just doesn't worth it. Like I will just open a landscape business now. I know how to make lawns. Yeah, you can do the <laughs> best <laughs> lawns. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'll just open that and do that if I'm supposed to. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And you know, yeah, it's like pay, get paid nothing. You yeah, know, get paid nothing that. basically. <laughs> Do something you love outside. Yeah, <laughs> and you know the thing is, uh, people don't know like the industry is. It's true, like there are so many artists, but the jobs are becoming harder. Like the studios are growing bigger. They become mm. they're becoming bigger and bigger. They're growing at a much faster pace, and yeah. you know, like it's hard to find good artists on character side or environment side. I've seen it in yeah. every studio, especially now with the PS Five. Like, you know. How many gamer studios are out there? I don't know, like thousands? Thousands, yeah, yeah. it's got to be thousands. Like if you look back probably. 20 years ago, yeah, go ahead, sorry, probably. I was going to say probably tens of thousands. I don't, I don't actually know the number. Yeah, or, but that's like, it's growing number. fast, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you look back like 20 years ago, um, I think I just knew like Ubisoft, Activision, they were just all mm -hmm. starting. I don't know, yeah. you, did Ubisoft exist at the time? I think they did, right? Uh, 20, yes, know. they did, they did. Yes, I remember mm -hmm. they did um sony that's it yeah. right there was no cd project red um, no you know there was no indie developer like now and they're turning into bigger studios you know pop g yeah yeah you know that's it but i mean that in a, in a sense is also an argument for why i mean the industry it's like you said like there's so many people working on these projects because they're so huge due to, yeah you know what we come to expect now we want a whole living city in a game yeah um and but I mean that's sort of an argument for um, a more sort of decentralized way of working. So creating asset libraries, um, yeah, and you know working that way, it almost makes it easier for people to to step out of that and become independent and use their skills to build product or like assets that can be used by those studios rather than the studios hiring people. Yeah. Everybody wins. You know, it kind of makes it's yeah. It's quite an interesting time, I think, because studios aren't going to be able to hire enough people to I, build. Yeah, I think that is the way to go, to be honest. Like, looking at Amazon, they're scaling, like, on yeah. a huge, like, <clears throat> I mean, they're growing so fast. Their stock, like, was $2,000, like, just three months ago. Now it's yeah. $2,900. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, Jeff Bezos is, like, $100 yeah. billion dollar richer. <laughs> so Ridiculous. <laughs> Because they're like working on it and it's easy to to buy everything. You know, people are getting rich from Amazon. Do you know about Amazon yeah. FDA? Like people sell on Amazon, they, they just uh, make well, they, stuff. They changed all the... Yeah, but... Changed the rates, didn't they? I, I'm not sure actually, but I know like so many people are making thousands of dollars every month from that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, definitely. It's a different way of business. Like, I mean, especially now with this uh, lockdown, it shows that you don't have to be in, a, in an office to, to make you know to do yeah, work and i think that's one of the good things that's come out yeah i think that's kind of it's quite an interesting side it effect <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a very good side effect actually because productivity yeah, yeah. goes up quality goes up i don't know what else like i mean everyone is like shopping online you don't have to waste you know money on gas people are becoming more familiar with like i don't know like cleaner way of transportation maybe yeah buying exactly. ev yeah. cars you know <laughs> yeah it's, it's changing. Like, I don't yeah, know, like well, if you heard, like Tesla sold like 90,000 90, cars while... Te uh, Tesla uh, is the the best selling car in the UK now. It, yeah, it's an amazing car, man. I don't yeah, know, I know, did, I'd love one. Did, did, you didn't get it yet? No, I haven't got one yet, no. Oh, I absolutely love you one. should. I mean, yeah, you yeah, should. I bought it. Yeah. I'm telling uh, you, yeah, like, got... get, a, get a Model 3 and you will never, ever regret it. Uh, have you got one? Yeah, I have a Model 3. Have you? You got a Model it's 3? It's amazing. Oh, I love it. Is it? I love it. What did you get? The, did you get the... Which one did you get? A long range. I had a long range? Yeah. It's quick then? It's, it's so good, man. It's so good. Like, I, it's an investment. I actually reduced yeah, my... Yeah. Um, people think it's an expensive car, but when you think about it long term, uh, it's actually cheaper than owning a gas car. Oh yeah, long yeah. term it is definitely. It's yeah. it's much cheaper. Like I I used yeah. to I had a Camaro. I don't know if you know about that. I think yeah. Some... Well, I spoke to you one time when you yes. were driving along in it. Yeah. <laughs> so I had so much trouble with that car. The engine was getting messed up. I couldn't fix it. Yeah. I spent like three thousand dollars to fix the engine, and there was like an issue deep into the engine from since we bought it, and yeah. we didn't know it. But and it showed up like after six years, and I couldn't fix it anymore. Right. 
So oh, right. yeah, and then I, I calculated I was paying like four thousand dollar, four thousand five hundred dollar every year just to update, keep that car. You know, gas. Yeah, yeah. You know, insurance, um, fixing stuff, oil change. I bought a Tesla, and I didn't spend a single dollar on it after I bought it. Yeah, you know? it's and, a lot less complicated machine, isn't it? Yeah, just- yeah, it is. And and regarding the expenses, I mean, um, I can just turn off one light at home, use one light less. Mm. One less light, you know, and then that will cover the the, yeah, yeah. the energy costs, right? It's it will cost yeah. me like thirty dollar a month to charge it. <laughs> That's pretty good, amazing. <laughs> yeah, I guess if solar develops to any sort of extent, you'll be able to charge it with the sun. Yes, uh, yeah, I think literally nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually one of the yeah, things maybe. I was like looking at. He's, um, uh, I'm looking to to get the Tesla truck when it comes out. I'm actually saving for that. Oh, what the the Cybertruck? <laughs> yes. I love oh, that. Right, it's cool. amazing. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. Yeah. I didn't like it at first, but then it's kind of grown on me now. Yeah, it's going to grow on you. I, I know exactly the feeling. Yeah. And then I, I don't know if this is true or not. I heard they're going to put some solar pan- panels on the back of the truck where the, oh, the right, thing closed. Cool. I don't know about yeah. it. I'm just like, I, maybe it's rumors. Maybe it's real. So, it would make sense, wouldn't it? I mean, if, they, yeah. if, they're, if they could provide a tenth of the power or something, you know, if you yeah. need it. Because, I mean, cars stay parked most of the day, don't they? Yeah. And if you yeah. live somewhere hot, then it makes sense for it to be charging. Yeah, and it's one of those cars that you cannot put in, in the garage, right? You, you have it outside constantly because it's yeah, huge. Yeah. It's big. It's bulletproof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, well, uh, you know, um, about Tesla, uh, I think if you get one, you will not regret it. I know you're into cars. You build cars. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. So the good thing is, one thing I'm pretty sure you, <clears throat> you will enjoy, I don't know if you did test drive it before, the Torque. The acceleration. I've never, I've never driven. I've been oh, in a, a Model S, but I haven't driven one. <coughs> you but yeah, I've been. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. Uh, so like, not the sixties. Like, your one is like four seconds. Or something, Mine is so. four point four point four. But if I pay two thousand yeah. dollars, I can reduce it to three point nine with software oh, upgrade. Really? <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and crazy. you know, it's instant torque. Like as soon as you push the yeah. gas, it goes. Like there's no delay. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just amazing. Yeah, uh, I really want to. I really would like one. I bought a BMW, thinking that would be the thing to do. I think you should wasn't. buy a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think when my lease runs out on the BMW, I'm going to get. A, I'm definitely getting an electric car. That's, yeah, it's it's great. Which BMW yeah. did you get? Uh, it's a 440i. Oh, it's a good car. But yeah, I had it all tuned. It's about 400 horsepower now, so it's oh, quite wow. quick. How fast but, is it? Zero to sixty. Uh, uh, about 4.8, 4.9 seconds. See, like still slow, it's slower than my car. <laughs> it's, it's definitely slower than yours. Yeah. <laughs> is it M or it's not M, right? No, it's not M. No, I looked at the M's, but the, the cost of running an M car is just ridiculous. Yeah, expensive, very expensive. And, yeah, and I just I just didn't didn't want to pay yeah. for something that was a little bit faster and definitely more obnoxious. Yeah, <laughs> you cannot use it unless if you're in Germany. <laughs> yeah. No. When when do you ever need to like? I mean, you can use it in a Tesla because you just put your foot down. But in yeah. an M or like a, a fast petrol car, you just sound like an idiot. Like everyone <laughs> looks at you. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. it's actually interesting. I love the sound of engine, but yeah, I, um, yeah. it, I love it. Like I'm into cars like crazy. I always like wanted to have a BMW M or. Mercedes GT. That's like one of the things. If I get rich enough one day, I'll buy maybe a Lamborghini or a sports car just to, oh, to yeah, have fun yeah. with it. But the thing is, after I, I actually love Porsches. Like those are my favorite cars, yeah. especially the uh, Cayman and the um, 718, the new version. And um, the new one, the yeah. V6 is back, isn't it? Or the straight six? I think, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, um, but after buying a Tesla, when I see a gas car, I'm like, no, that's. That's an old car. <laughs> did, I, did I seem dirty and old? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you can yeah. see, feel the smell, like um, because the, the, I mean, electric Tesla doesn't smell any any. There's no carbon dioxide, right? There's yeah, no chemicals, yeah. nothing. Uh, and also, like the the engine doesn't sound, but there is a weird um, sound. It's like electric yeah. sound. It's different. It's kind of satisfying, to be honest with you. Mm. When you push the gas, obviously there's no gas. It's just a pedal that accelerates. Yeah, the car. yeah. So <laughs> it's it's very yeah. fun to drive. I've always wondered what they could sound like electric cars. You know, if you had something on the drive shaft or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. like a 
you know, like you used to put on your bike wheels when you were a kid, like spoky dokies. Yeah. Do you remember those that make yeah. like a noise, like a motorbike? Yeah. I wonder whether you could make an electric car sound cool, you know, if it had a bit of an exhaust, and like a, a resonance chamber and something that you could mm. actually have and like you could actually make it sound quite, quite loud and quite good. So I, I think I'll miss that. I think they'll, honestly, I think you will not miss it. Do you not reckon? No, because I, I'm I, I'm saying maybe I'm like this I, because I, I like the sound of engine, right? I like mm. when you drive a V8 engine, rrr, the sound yeah, is it's it's awesome. just, yeah. yeah, it's awesome. It's It kind of rushes other than in, you, you get high kind of, you know what I mean? It's like fire, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Explosions. <laughs> but there is something with Tesla that makes you feel like you're in the future. Yeah. It is different than that. It's a different beast, you know? Yeah. So you may not really miss it because it's a completely different experience it feels like you're driving right. on an iphone <laughs> but, you know. yeah, right, cool. <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll, I'll go and i'll go and test drive one when <laughs> we're allowed to like i go think outside. you should <laughs> <laughs> i think you should cool. so uh yeah. okay i mean this was a great talk man thank you so much this yeah, was amazing yeah, was awesome. i really yeah, enjoyed it so you. much yeah, um, yeah so maybe we can plan um whenever you have time maybe you can give me some dates schedule wise so we can I mean, go see, live I, could, I can i want to launch this to share this one or to, to just, do just to one? like do a live and to basically help like answer questions about charging how to price their their i don't know if you can do do you want to do that yeah like, i'd love to do that yeah help, help artists to to grow, grow some business sense in, in their you know um yeah, Brain, I'd be more than happy to do that anytime. I mean, I can do that next week if you want. I don't mind. Next week, um, but yeah, but I mean, your great. viewers probably probably be sick of me by then. No, no, know, dude. I'll I, I, I'm like actually three enjoying... hours of Busby. <laughs> no, I enjoyed <laughs> the conversation. It it's amazing. Like every time I spoke to you, it was fun. I think, yeah, it's it's fun. Cool. Yeah, me too. Yeah, no, it's it's been awesome. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, we can do it uh, on a weekend maybe because I feel like people are home yeah. and they would watch live. So yeah. I'll, yeah, that's fine with me. Could I'm gonna. Like yeah, after Saturday this some, Sunday, Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, that that could work yeah. either. So, um, let's set a date after this, and then okay, cool. talk about it. All right. Sounds Do good. you want to say anything else to people? Do you want to say bye? Uh, uh, well, if they've watched this, far, <laughs> they probably just want me to go away. So. <laughs> no, no. I'm telling. They're you. probably waiting for it to end. <laughs> no, no, no. That's the. Uh, that's how you see it. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> So, I, I can't really think of anything else to say. To be okay. honest, I think we've yeah. Great, cool. Thanks, James. Yeah. Very nice of no, you. Thank, thank you so you very much. much. Cheers. And cheers. Awesome. We'll talk thank again you. later. See you. <laughs> See you. Bye bye. Yeah.